Hello, everyone. Happy Friday to you. Happy weekend. Welcome to it. And welcome to Missed Opportunities, where here on the Lawful Stupid RPG channel, we are taking on the hardcover Curse of Strahd in the D&D 5th edition, edition. With us today, we have Elena as the Paladin Claire. We have Liz as the Cleric Maris. We have Anime Panda playing Mary the Bard, Jade as the Wizard, and Sean playing Gesualdo de la Rosa. I am the... waving, but you cannot see. Yes, he is. <laughs> Imagine him vividly waving at you, uh, playing our rogue. Not with us tonight is our dear friend, um, Kyle, playing his druid character, Saurif. Um, He is not able to make it, but we will persevere in his absence. So last time we gathered, the group made their way to the Vistani camp near the Tser pool. Um, there was a lot of conversation. A new party member was met in Mary the Bard the, with the sort of mysterious marionette. Um, they also met Madam Ava, the fortune teller and they were given a number of um, hints as to uh, items and persons who may help them in their quest. So the party stayed the night at the Vistani camp after this reading. Um, some of them got involved in some illicit uh, activities, but um, Everyone was okay, everyone survived, and morning comes. Silently creeps up on you. And you awaken together. It is cool. Dew hanging to the grass. Frogs croaking from just beyond the mist in every direction. <laughs> So how long is it, in, or how far is it, I should say, to the village that we are traveling to? To uh, Velaki, I'm not sure. Um, is uh, Irena awake yet? Um, she is not at the moment. She seems to well, uh, be curled over. Uh, sleeping, sleeping, on sleeping on the ground. On arm. Sleeping on the ground around the fire is uh, quaint and all, but... I propose that tonight we stay in, in, in my treat. Well, can do our best to make our way towards one. Um, I'll get up and start getting my armor together, stretching a little bit, getting ready for the day. Hey, Limus, I have a magic question. Oh, God. Yes. So, to do magic on someone, do you need something of theirs? Like, say you wanted to make them do something bad. Would you need a thing that belonged to them or something like that? Are you thinking like a charm spell? Um, maybe. Hmm. Let me have a look at my book. Uh, not for a charm no. spell, no. You just, oh, know, okay. you just need to know the words and to pronounce them correctly. So if someone had, like, a piece of your hair, they could not use it to do magic on you? Um, can I get what, what he's getting at? I mean, obviously I know what he's getting at, but there's a live <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he, there's, this I is mean, pretty simple. Um, go ahead and make an arcana check. Nine. Asking, asking for a friend. Um, Elimus, none of the magic you've studied has needed any sort of component beyond um simple gems or items uses a focus so um i mean why would some part of someone's body be necessary or something like that you, perhaps but nothing that you've that you are directly familiar with it's it's one of those things you wouldn't say no because you know as a very intelligent wizard you know what you don't know you just don't know this if that makes sense i've got a good idea for how to explain this so he says oh, sure maybe maybe not i mean if 
for for example an invisibility spell i need an eyelash so who knows a piece of hair another spell maybe even something divine but that's really not my uh my line of expertise sorry mm. okay who's well, this friend I, I, you're asking for ah well there may have been a exchange of various things um in the last 24 hours and it occurred to me that this might not be the safest place to do such a thing sure all right just don't get yourself killed whatever uh no i'm gonna promises. check on maris since she was not doing too hot last night um she you up yet you're muted you're muted. But now I'm not. And I'm <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, so um, Maris has, I guess, rejoined the party after leaving Essie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be back mm -hmm. with all of you. Yeah, but I'm ready to move forward in our yeah, journey. Definitely itching to get on the road. Mm -hmm. You had a nice time, oh. but I think it's time to get to work. I imagine at this point, uh, Marie will probably step out from a tent uh, okay. that she was sleeping in or, or that private, wherever it was. And would um, you like to describe her again for Liz so she knows who she sees uh, coming around? Sure. Um, you see a um, normal, normal height uh, female woman with uh, long uh, brown hair. It is sort of tied up at the sides. It's very elegantly, elegantly done, especially for the morning time. Um, these bright green eyes, um, heavy uh, purple makeup, um, somewhat like a performer, but not too much um, in a red uh, bustle dress. Um, and carrying along uh, beside her is a uh, wooden sort of marionette puppet. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, she she just she just heads out from her tent and and heads on over to the group um, and just plops herself down next to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Uh, feel like you're up for some travel? Yes. Um, I think before the others awaken might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'd rather Madame Ava told them about it rather than myself. That's completely understandable. Um, let's just uh, double check we've got everyone. Uh, I'm sure Saurav is about somewhere. Um, he will tag along. Um, At this point, you hear um, a uh, the footfalls kind of coming up through the grass, and you hear. Mm, water was not feeling good. Mm, not wet as usual. Very dry, hurt skin. Mm. Who has back? Does he Who has say, good uh, back? Me, stupid lizard. Do stupid things. Kill lots of crows. <laughs> I... No, that's not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> if that is what you said, I gently flick you. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where you are. Alimus does say that, yeah. <laughs> That's gracious. Uh, who Very has tired. Um, back? Please help. And he oh, do you, do you... transforms into a small frog. Okay, I'm just, I'll gently pick him up. He can ride on my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> um, he um, kind of nudges over and gets uh, like a little bug that was crawling up behind your ear that you didn't okay. quite see. Off your neck, good, so. good. Symbiotic you, relationship here. You all have not known me for very long, so this won't mean as much to you as it should, but that is the strangest man I have ever, ever known. I agree. The fact you think it's a man worries me. Um, sorry. That's obviously ask, not a man. Yeah, is he really a man? I, I'm not really sure that's a but he could be that's my, that's I want to have right that now. That is exactly my point. He could be anything. He could be a man. He could be not a man. Does it matter? He's in a constant nah. state of flux. He's an it. And that's you, um, totally fine. 
as this is happening, you see just kind of across the, uh, around the other side of the mound, um, you hear a little bit of shuffling and um, uh, what looks to be a human man looks up like, oh, why are you being so loud? Kind of look in your guys' direction. Um, and you see then a little, uh, it seems to be a form of a, uh, a woman kind of collecting some things from the same area and scampering off sort of into the morning, um, staggering a bit, um, as if still feeling a little bit of the effects of whatever was imbibed last night. Um, you guys are early to waking up, but uh, the camp is just beginning to partially, probably because of the uh, exuberance that you are now uh, <laughs> exerting. So. All right. Um, do we have Essie? Um, Essie? has explained to you guys that um, she does not have the heart to proceed. Um, something in that uh, last encounter seems to have potentially broken her and she needs time to rest and heal. And so she is staying here in the camp with some of the children. Um, you saw her last night around them sitting. And she, there, was, there was like a blankness to her gaze for a while after the encounter with the wolf. But um, when you came here and when she started playing some music for the children, it seemed to give a little bit more life mm -hmm. to her. Um, so um, she's decided to stay at least for a while with the blessing of the camp. Yeah. Whatever makes her or whatever helps her yeah. heal best. I yeah. make sure I bid a farewell and just to say, mm -hmm. stay safe. Yeah, I think we'll all give a parting word before heading on the road and we'll make sure we wake up Irana before we do so <laughs> yeah um she <sighs> sorry um you notice that there are again dark circles under her eyes she looks tired um this is perhaps the first true night of sleep she's gotten in quite some time yeah. mm. all right well once everyone gets themselves armored, washed, ready to go. We should head on the road, and I defer to Irena as far as what direction we need to take to get to Velaki. Uh, Mary would know as well that you need to backtrack um, because the uh, heading along, continue along the path that you came will lead you to um, the river and uh, further up the Tsar pool. But um, getting across it is difficult from that direction. You have to backtrack and go around to a bridge. Okay. Um, so that, that would be back up towards that crossroads that we mm -hmm. came to? Okay. Um, let's, let's head in that direction. Okay. You bid the camp farewell as it's beginning to wake up. The foggy morning parts before you and you trudge up the path and into the wooded area. Um, Elimus, you do a quick a bit of a double take and, um, well, Sauri would as well. The, your passive perception allows you to notice a black uh, a figure in black leather armor leaning against a tree with sort of a crossbow hanging lazily from their arm. Do you look in the direction they give you a curt nod? I'm not back. Are there any ravens around? Ah. Go ahead and make a perception check. Seventeen is my role. At the moment, you do not see any. You do not hear any birds. You hear the croaking of frogs a bit. Perhaps the the slight buzz of crickets around the camp. But now that's begun to fade into a eerie silence once again as you make your way into the woods. You know, a frog would be a perfect meal for a crow. Don't start. <laughs> I'm just saying he could, probably could have chosen a better form. Well... Take it up with him then, next time he's lizard. They might accept the offering and see it as a, a beg for forgiveness. 
Cool. Uh, maybe my dead vat. Wait, I, uh, are you saying that we are also cursed? It's just him, right? I, well, he was the only one who killed them, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. I, I would say it's safe to assume it's just him. Mm. Well, I think we can let him make that decision as to whether he wants to offer himself up in sacrifice when he's uh, a little more conscious. He kind of crawls and hops into your hood in the Mm -hmm. back, (laughs) off your shoulder. (laughs) He's far too interesting to let die anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm, as we're walking along and my brain is waking up a little bit more, I'm a little slow in the morning sometimes, um... I'm, I have this recollection um, that in our um, reading um, from last night that there was mention of a crossroad, something to be found amongst buried dead. And I do believe that at the crossroads that we passed on the way here, there was a, um, a gravesite or some kind of um, a uh, graveyard that's the word that i'm looking for um is, is my recollection correct on that dm um yes okay there was uh, a gallows and a grave site um might perhaps be worth checking in that area um i don't know if that's being what if that's what's being referenced but it doesn't hurt to be thorough oh that reminds me um a little bit of information that i acquired last night oh from alenka um, apparently, there is a Vistani girl who is missing. Her name is Arabel. Some of the um, the nomads who live in Valaki it sent a message to the camp and were inquiring if she had made it there, and they, she had not. Hmm. Arabel is her name. Vistani girl. I think missing there was something child. about that. Yep, that was the first card. Mm. Missing child has the key you, amongst this other Vistani. <laughs> there, I have helped. <laughs> your, uh, your exploits and attempts towards betting someone have actually proved useful. Maybe we should Thank prioritize you. that. Well, that'll we be... Um, Mary, about how far is it to Velaki from here? How far is it to Velaki from here, Dan? Um, it usually, the, the times you've marched there, it usually takes about a day Okay. from the Tzerpool camp. Well, the crossroads are right up the road from here. Um, I'm not sure we want to backtrack. Mm-hmm. Didn't we have to go there for something? Well, that's the first place we're going to look to see yeah. whether Irena is going to be safe there. It's mm-hmm. about a day march away. Well, we could at least look at the gravesite. Yeah, and you don't. I mean, have to it go seems in if like it seems so on the nose. Crossroads gravesite. <laughs> it does. So, press on up the up the path. Hmm. All right. I I you shot. wind up through the path and soon reach what seems to be the main a main road, a main thoroughfare, and. It comes to a crossroads. Again, you see the empty gallows with a r- worn frayed rope just swinging at the end, and a copse to the other side with um, unmarked gravestones. I uh, know, uh, mysteriously hanging body is very similar to mine <laughs> hanging from there today. Not at the moment. Mm. Good, great. Not something I want to see again. Um, um, everybody go ahead and roll a perception check, please. Ooh, a perception, you said. <laughs> I am fantastic with my plus two. Uh, Three. I've got a 16. Wow. I rolled another 17. I rolled a natural one. <laughs> I must. <laughs> 15. I should oh. smoke opium more often. I've got a perception of two, but a passive perception so. of 17. Yeah, 18 that's, uh... was my first roll. Okay. Got it. Um, uh, Maris, you see then a, a figure just sort of moving ever so slightly in the trees behind the gallows. It appears to be a large raven cocking its head. 
looking in your guys' direction. Just looking. Or um, it flies off into the woods. Oh, that's good. I'm glad it flew away. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't glad ready to fight a raven. <laughs> glad what flew away? Uh, you know, don't. I saw a raven. It's gone. We don't <gasps> probably need to worry about it. Um, I want to go take a closer look at this uh, little grave site. Okay. Um, I will go I and help. Am, yeah. Is do we? It's in order to look around this area, see if there might be any sign of something here. Is that going to be a perception or like an investigation? That'd be investigation. I will right. definitely not my do forte, investigate. but uh, does yeah, someone just, want to help me? And give me I will help. I'm going to help Alimus. Are you just proficient well done, in investigation, Elena? Or, what? Uh, uh, oh, do Claire? I do I need to be proficient in it yeah. in order to help? Ah, I did not know that. Then I will to, not help. <laughs> to lend help to a character who is proficient, yes. Ah, I can't do that. <laughs> Can anyone? Yeah. I am not proficient either. <laughs> but I could roll investigation. I have half proficiency, if that helps. No, jack of all trades not, not, doesn't quite qualify. <laughs> Thank you're you. bard, you're proficient in enough things. So, <laughs> just, just Waldo one. leans against the gallows, uh, just sort of looking at his fingernails. Do you gonna you want to help me, just Waldo? Um, are you scared of the graves? Are you? A little bit, hmm. but I mean, why start now, right? Um, <laughs> so yes, I can help, I suppose. What are we doing? I'll uh, we'll just check in the area. Look for anything that stands out. Oh. The grave site. The grave site. I am. Just so you all know, I am not proficient. So oh, it's, damn it. it's. Oh. <laughs> I, I will roll normal then. I was literally <laughs> with just a natural twenty. Oh, the gallows. <laughs> it just seemed um, like you were playing a toy game. <laughs> like, well, who's no, no, that, me? that was that was just. Alimus <laughs> gets the um and says, "Just you, just stay there, look pretty." And he will just go and get a natural twenty for a twenty-seven. Yes, Ooh. awesome. Very when nice. um when done something will, something done right, they are all unmarked. However, um, you're looking at the graves uh, one by one. They seem to be in. Um, in short rows and then there seems to be you, you can tell the order that they were buried in you think oh interesting they went down one way then started back then snaked around and went above um, at one point they ran out of the um, sedimentary rock that they used for the gravestones and so had to uh, switch to cairns um, but you know the grass has grown remarkably evenly. If someone was buried here, or as far as you can tell, no one was buried here recently at all. There are about two dozen, three dozen graves. Well, well, you count exactly uh, 37, though. So. Okay. Might have seen nothing out of the ordinary. Mm. No one's been buried here recently, that's for sure. All right. Um, uh, when, when do I think the last time someone was hung on these gallows, hanged on these gallows? Um. Yeah, that that's interesting. So, are you over at the graves with them, or are you still? Um. I how don't is, it, is it? Is it a far? Is it like a long distance? It's like across with... the street. It's it's uh, probably twenty. Uh, 20 to 30 feet across. Well, yeah, sure. I sort of over. walk over there as I'm looking up at the gallows philosophically. And as I come over, I wonder when the last time someone was hanged on these gallows was. Yeah. Um, are you, uh, how, how would you like to go? Are you just wondering aloud or you would you like to make a check to try and investigate? Or I will try to investigate because I'm going to roll a natural 20. Okay. Go ahead and try to investigate. <laughs> Let's see yeah. that natural. So point. close. <laughs> Very uh, close. That's... <laughs> that is a 12. Um, so you you go over and look at the uh, structure of the wood. Um, it seems to be worn, r rotted away in parts, but still fairly sturdy. Um, 
you can't quite reach the rope to see how you know it would hang but you can see that it is frayed at the end as if it was uh well it, it broke somehow uh, but it's not a clean slice it's been frayed away and broken at some point you look down to uh the base um because the very bottoms seem rotted away where they hit the earth as if too much moisture has gotten into the wood. And as you're looking down there, you hear a... And you look up to see the bottom of two feet hanging above your head. Um, Claire? Mm, yeah, what? You remember the other day when you said that you saw something hanging from these canals? Yeah, I don't really want to think about that. Why? What do you see anything hanging there now? Do I? You do, Claire. What do I see? You see a lifeless bloated body wearing dull clothing, commoner's clothing. I mean, there's a body up there right bent now. To the side. Was it there before? Um, it I was mean, not when you time... encountered. It seems to have appeared oh. as you were investigating. Does it wasn't there when you approached. It was an empty ah. rope. Does okay. everyone see this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. As it comes to your attention, as everyone looks, you see, yes, a, a gray-skinned, lifeless body hanging, streaming hmm. hair down the side. Elimus, this body is in unmistakably you staring back at you with empty eyes all the intelligence of which have left it hmm. 37 graves and i see myself hanging there okay okay claire i see you wasn't as crazy as before as i thought gee thanks <laughs> just want to pull out a uh, throwing knife Slightly unnerving. And is going to try an attempt to throw it up and slice the rope. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. I have rolled a 15. Okay. It would be yes. 10 on the sneak attack damage if it didn't know it was coming. <laughs> uh, the rope has no discernible anatomy with which to sneak attack. <laughs> ah. Um, Do they have the thread of life? What about like a frayed edge or something? So, <laughs> no, I don't think so. However, um, with that and that uh, amount of piercing damage, the rope frays once again and begins to and then snaps and plummet the body plummets to the ground hitting with a sickening thud uh. in front of you and starts twitching Is it alive? but twitch uh yeah it seems to move just a little bit it doesn't seem alive necessarily hard to say it is just moving um i just well, want to pull out his nervous system is it <laughs> This <laughs> one pulls out his rapier <laughs> and pokes it a bit. Alamus okay. is a very intelligent man, obviously knowing it's not him. Well, you know, he knows it's not him. So he's just he's obviously staring at it and ready in a spell, waiting for it to move. Okay. Or wait for it to sort of stand up and attack, sort of thing. Alamus, so when you. when you. What's that? Sorry. Mary. I just said, um, uh, Alimus, I can't see the resemblance to you. No, it's, uh, it appears it's what it wants me to see. Same as what it did to Claire. This um, is what I was telling you about yesterday, Mary. Jeswaldo, as you begin, you start, you go to poke it, and you notice a bit of a twitching in the lower abdomen, which is like, that's a strange place to twitch. And you notice... The twitching is coming almost from its stomach region, just moving, bulging a bit. Its head then lolls over in your direction, and an eye begins to open. It's almost like it's growing eyelashes for a moment. And then you realize that it's not. They're empty eye sockets, and the legs of spiders work their way out from the eyelids yeah. and crawling out. 
the jaw drops and a swarm of spiders begins coming from the mouth just as your sword pierces its abdomen and then with a oh. sickening gas uh, erupts in your direction. I need you to make a constitution saving throw and then we will oh roll God. initiative. That's and a very best enormous saving swarm throw. of spiders begins oh. to uh, pile in your direction. Let me see here. That's so gross. <laughs> Every now and then I do something with uh, beyond uh, D and D Beyond, and I lose track of where everything is kept. Where are the top throws? left? Yes, they, that's what I thought. But there have we go. go. There we go. Constitution saving throw. I have rolled a five. Oh, good. <laughs> oh dear. Good start. You this um horrid gas uh before you can uh you know recoil against it the initial shock you gasp and then that in that gasping sound breathe way too much of this in and it burns your lungs your sinuses everything around your face you are poisoned Ugh. Not the fun. um cool sorry let me bring up the initiative tracker here and go ahead, everyone, and roll initiative. Can we do that without having tokens clicked? Yeah. You can't. You can, but it just won't go into the tracker. Okay. But, yeah. Um, here. We're not going to do a, necessarily a battle map, but everyone, oh, you can okay. drag your little um, token on anywhere in order to do that. Um, or scratch that. Let me just pull you over to a to uh, this map here. I rolled a nineteen. These. Is it too late? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Shall we re-roll again? Uh, nope. Just drag your I, onto here, and then whatever you rolled the first time uh, mm -hmm. will be just fine. I don't have any. I don't have a character seat to drag from. Did we not set that up last time? No. <laughs> okay. <sighs> so sorry. This will take two. It means steps. you're not real. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't exist. She's a figment of your imagination, Elias. You have no sisters. You yeah. never did. Oh, that bit. <laughs> you just wish she had one. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mary, do you have a? Uh... Can you see that now? The character? I can, you should but be I, don't, I don't have the image on my laptop. I sent you my token, though. You did. I'll have that up right now, your um, your nameless Facebook icon. So, but <laughs> oh, we'll sweet. get that. Thank you. Yeah. You were able to roll initiative, though, and you can move it. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. I thought we had everything set up when I went and I thought, oh, wait. Are we rolling again, are we? Oh, I kind of liked my first initiative. Yeah, I like uh, No, just, just the first one you uh, you cool. did is fine. You can. Uh... Uh, I can't put it mine on the tracker, so unless you put it on and allow me to do it. Yeah, same. Yeah. All right, rolled a 19 again. Nice and easy. 21. Better. 13 for me. I believe you can edit your own. Oh, can we? Oh, on there. You can. wonderful. Oh, Why not let me edit it? She's a gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> She's huge. She could squish the entire colony with <laughs> one step. I cannot click her though. Now, now try dragging her on. Can you not put points in? Oh, you can. Okay. She's. It's not on my character sheet. It's. It should work once you drag it on. No, I, I only have the Facebook profile thing still. Right, it, but it's it it's um, uploaded as your token, so I think it should work. When you drag it on, it should on the battle map appear as your character, and then I'll edit the other one. Um, I can't. I can't get it to go on. Really. No, I, I have nothing to drag. 
Um. <laughs> dun, 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 I think you can try refreshing D and D Beyond. There, can you control this token? No, I can't. Because I think you added it as just an image, not as my token. Yeah, I switched. I I did switch it over. So, why don't you? Could you try and refresh? Yeah, the... I'm, I'm I'm giving it a shout. Uh... Sorry, folks. We're getting this figured out. I remember when Dungeons and Dragons was played around a table. <laughs> we had these things called snacks. Oh, we would I eat miss them. Snacks. And I mean... dice. <laughs> oh, like, she's snacks still over. exist. <laughs> yeah, but snacks are so much better shared around a table. <laughs> it's true. Food tastes better when you take it off of someone else's. When I first learned how to play D&D &D was the first time that Doritos came out with their first flavor, Cool Ranch. And that Ooh. was all we ate for an entire summer. So whenever I eat Cool Ranch Doritos, I think of sitting around my friend's busted up ping pong table and learning to play D&D. &D. Okay. And that would be a D&D. &D, by... How much not in existence was I? <laughs> is my question. <laughs> I started um, with classic, I think. I'm going to go with idea. minus 10 years at least. <laughs> I started when I was 10, so that's what, 34 years ago. Oh. I'm old. Are we there yet? Okay, we... Rob 20 is just loaded for me, and I still have nothing I can drag on. <laughs> I did just I'm try so to um, Google Dorito Cool Ranch first year, but something came up in the Google search bar as Dorito Cool Ranch Firestarter, which makes me concerned. Huh. I'm now having connection issues on Rob20. No. No. Uh, Maybe that's I'm, the original source of things. All right. I'm just going to save the token. I'll add it on in a minute. All It'll right. Be what's fine. your... Um... What it was, was the initiative 13. you rolled? 13. It was 13. 13? All right. We'll go with that. Claire, what's your dex? My dex is 12. All right. Mine is 14. Cool. Da -da. Oh, boy. We got 221s here. You guys are some some fast people going on here. Oh, so uh, we're this will be theory of the mind style, though. You see um, a number of uh, clumps of spiders swarming out of this body towards Jaswaldo. Elimus, you are first to react. Uh, knowing he had a spell prepared. Burn it! Burn them! <laughs> he looks, puts his fingers together. And uh, whispers the words, uh, Estatus Manus, and a, f uh, a fan of flames will just come out towards the spiders for a burning hands. Ooh. Over 10 the damage. That was perfect damage. tool for the job. Uh, they have a 13 on their save. Fouled. Nice. So it'll take the full 10. Ooh, that seems to do a decent amount of damage. And as they're all clumped together on the body, you are able to burn through, or you are able to apply that burning damage to all of the swarms. Mm -hmm. Which is excellent. Maris, you are up with your nice 21 there. Yeah. Uh, so thinking also that the best line of attack will be to burn them, um, Maris is also going to try her hand at burning hands hey. what uh, the wizard's the shame i look disappointed how dare you steal my magic <laughs> <laughs> uh teamwork makes the dream work <laughs> so hers have this sort of scintillating flame about or scintillating sunlight like characteristic around the um around the flame it's a little bit different from your arcane flame mm -hmm. but uh I'm, this time i have a 21 to save on oh the decks. man it's a natural 20 <laughs> on their save so they will take i believe half what? damage right enemies can get natural 20s that's not fair i know right <laughs> so i take five damage then mm. uh six. Oh, because you roll it twice yep five Now, the spiders begin to creep onto you, Jeswaldo. 
three groups of them begin to crawl onto your body and all over yourself you are covered in them and each of them tries to attack you um i have a 20 a 13 and a 10 but the 20 hits but that is all all right um you will take seven points of piercing damage then one um skitters towards you alimus and they crawl up onto you again you are the, covered in spiders I, I stamp they on bite them. you never never would i let spiders <laughs> get close to me you get a few but um it's every time your foot hits the ground three more crawl onto your boot oh and up your God. leg sinking their fangs in at a 17 to hit yes that hits nine piercing damage to you ow and maris they crawl all over you trying to sneak their way into your armor Uh-oh. and bite at a 22 to hit <laughs> yeah that hits <laughs> seven points of piercing damage uh. as you feel a few of them get underneath your uh the some the bites just feel like a dull ache suddenly hitting your shoulder and then ah, on the outside gross. of your thigh a sharp burning sensation as they work their way into your clothing Cool. Jeswaldo, you are covered by three swarms. Jeswaldo has the perfect weapon for this. A rapier. <laughs> Just oh, he does. <laughs> sorry, sorry, eat the spiders! Eat the spiders! <laughs> is there water nearby? Uh, no, there is not. Is there dirt or anything that I could roll in? Um, Dusty road. He, yes, it's a dusty road. All right, he immediately drops and just begins to roll around, trying to shake, get out of the spiders. Okay. Uh, some of them uh, on the ground begin to then uh, leap up onto you. Uh, go ahead and make um, an improvised weapon attack. Just eat them! Eat them all! Um, let's see. So just an unarmed strike? Mm-hmm. I have an 11. Um, as you are you are punching at the different ones at you, but um, every time you look, uh, oh, oh, it's a nice piece of clothing. That's a nice seam. You kind of pull the punch a little bit, or um, <laughs> you, you, you're just trying to get them off. <laughs> Unfortunately, for every one you expertly squish, boom, 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 it seems a few more have crawled onto you. you do Is it possible to... So damage. I know the, the rules for swarms. Is it possible to get out of the space of the swarm? Um, it is so. Um, though uh, you you could move away one square. Yes. All right, I will do that. Though, of course, you would provoke. Are you uh, army crawling, or are you are you still on the ground, rolling around? So I so they moved into my space. Yes. They attack. They, they do an attack of opportunity if I move out of their. Sorry, space. if you move further than five feet away from them, they will. Right. They will. No, no. I want to move. I want to get them off of me so that somebody else can blast them with fire, without yeah. blasting me. That is the plan. Okay, but yeah, I, I got that. I apologize. Where, are you still on the ground? Um. No, I will stand up. Okay. You kind of drop to the ground, army crawl away while smashing a few of them. Yes, just sort of, yeah, I roll, I do a a nice little sort of roll and then a very um, acrobatic leap to my feet. Okay, Claire, uh, Jaswaldo has um, crawled away from an immense pile of spiders. There is spiders swarming all over Maris and all over Elimus. What do you do? Okay, my first question. Can I wield Salreve? (laughs) <laughs> the frog <laughs> to eat the spider. You could have him turn into a walrus <laughs> mid swing <laughs> and squish them all. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, well, I will say this Saurive in little frog form could certainly eat a few spiders really fast, but you're dealing with hundreds here. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, 
while a very amusing solution, maybe not the most effective one. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, well, I'm going to. Um, can I get close enough to this uh, swarm that just um, that that Jeswaldo just left to hit? Yeah, you can okay. come up there close. Um, so I'm going to step up close to where they are. I'm going to take out my. Uh, or can I can I um un, un I don't know how you unsheath a mace, um but Just can I do that as I belt. move? Yeah. Can I may I unclip it as I move? Oh, of course, yeah, that's a okay. free item interaction. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm going to let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to cast booming blade through that and make a melee attack. Okay. And did oh, oh gosh that cantrip's a little to... funky, so you'll just have to uh, yes make uh, a weapon attack actually. That is fine. Ooh, not good. I rolled horribly. I got a nine to hit. <laughs> yeah. So um, you do you see these clumps of spiders? These multiple swarms in the same uh, space, and you think, all right, I've got the middle of them, and you bring it right down in the middle, but it thumps into the earth. A couple of them splat underneath you but um, the majority okay. of the swarm seems to be on either side of the mace, unfortunately. Um, the, the rest of my turn, I'm going to reach back and try to grab the frog and, and be like, sorry, go eat. Giant, a giant frog, a giant frog. <laughs> go forth. Uh, you see the little, a little eye poke up, lick itself, and then go back down <laughs> into your hood. <laughs> Oish. Mary, you are up. Question. Is there, is there a place, let's say it just as an example, a uh, 15 foot cube of which I could hit all spiders or a majority of spiders and none of my companions? Uh, you could hit the three in front of Jeswaldo and sorry, Claire, you could hit the, th the three swarms in front of them. Unfortunately, Elimus is sharing space with a swarm, and so is Maris. Uh, there's not really much I can do. So Marie just slowly kind of backs away, and um, uh, Elimus, you see, um, as she uses the marionette, and it, it becomes, uh, it has your, your hair, your, your clothing, your features, and you see it getting up and... Um, almost like fire blasting and like a victory dance, this little puppet of you. And I give you a bardic inspiration as I slowly back away, marrying heading your success. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I will just uh, hold a dodge action or something because there's nothing I can do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Elimus, back to you. You are covered in spiders. Um. So if I move out of the swarm... Mm -hmm. I mean, are they still on me, or am I like shaking them off as I'm getting out, or you're kind of shaking them off? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, how much have I got to move to get out of the swarm? Is it um, five foot or five five feet? Yes. Okay. He will five foot step, shaking them off while he does, um, and then turn around and repeat the words of Burning Hands. It stuns, it stuns Manus, and then just okay blasts again yes the fire erupts outwards go ahead and oh that's a bit better damage for dc that's 14 damage if they fail cool um you hear a bunch of tiny little shrieks and hissing sounds as um they roast and begin to uh, just, people uh in there. disintegrate into ash cool is there still m many around me then no that swarm is turned to so, so that's a 15 foot cone from where i am so how so we're a little bit theater of the mind right now um so that would be you are i imagined you were back by the still with the graves and um if one climbed on you getting back towards you would be um it would be difficult to get the three no oh, okay near near um just waldo and maris without hurting them as well okay Okay, yeah, that's my action. Okay. Maris. 
Okay, so Maris is very freaked out by all the spiders crawling all over her body and clearly deeply uncomfortable. So she is going to cast the cantrip Word of Radiance. Nice. Yes, in the Mm. hope that she can incinerate the spiders from a light from within. Cool, go ahead and post that text. And how do I post the text? Uh, If you, when you have the spell open, you should Mm -hmm. see a little button that also says display in VTT. Ooh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So yeah, they are, those are definitely within five feet of you. They are in, within zero feet of you, in fact. Yes. So um, they will make a constitution save. I've got a four as a result. (laughs) And let's see. Yes, a few of them will burn away, burn off. You feel like you have um, significantly damaged the swarm. It is weakening heavily, but they are still alive. You still feel them crawling underneath your armor. Okay, well. Any movement, anything else? Um, I guess if she could, like, move to try to like dislodge them yeah you, <laughs> by, you like, can, running you can blaze, shimmy a couple sort of, of them like, out shake a couple you <laughs> yeah. know off and step aggressively away aggressively jumping up and down like I don't something know. <laughs> like that yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you shake a couple out of your boots out of your sleeves and that you see them still sort of swarming around on the ground in front of you <laughs> raising their front legs and uh <laughs> you know looking aggressively at your direction okay but, um, <laughs> not occupying your space any longer nice After that, um, t- uh, one swarm will move into, because uh, I believe Claire rushed to the rescue and is now next to them. Um, one will reach out to, actually will try to climb all over you. Just to say hello. Just to say hello. Uh, does an 18 hit you? That Sorry, a, Claire, that, you're that muted. was a mimed no. <sighs> no, it does oh. not. That's really disappointing. There was really good damage <laughs> on that. All right, uh, Jeswaldo, I've got a 10 and an 8 against uh, you. Jeswaldo dodges around the spider swarm. Okay, they do move once again into your Does he dodge space. around in panic, though? <laughs> Is it like uh, one yes, of those panic things? <laughs> He manages to look very athletic and graceful, but he is panicked. Um, is he screaming? <laughs> yes, like a little girl, um, <laughs> if that helps. Um, Maris, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, it's they, they still have no turn. Sorry. Yes, and then Maris one by two at a 22. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> Though there are significantly less of these, and well, actually, they still rolled pretty well. They eight damage. Oh, the piercing variety. <laughs> My favorite kind. There was 15 coming at Claire on that first one. So. Oh my god. All right, Jaswaldo, you're up. Now my covered again by two swarms. <laughs> um, I will shake them off and take the dodge action. Okay. So basically move five feet out of the range and then I'm dodging. Okay. Claire, and you are up. Um, so there are they. Wait, did did you just leave? The, did they attack you and they did not get in your space? Or, yeah, they no, they, they, had, they, had, they came into my space and attacked, missed, but they're in my space and then I stepped out of their space. But okay. I'm only, I'm, I'm right next okay, to them. Okay, so I'm gonna try the same thing as before. Um, see if I can actually smack these guys with my mace 16 to hit with the um, the booming blade. Yes, um, that will hit. Lovely. Um, so that was, uh, eight bludgeoning damage. And then if, if they move at it willingly before my turn, they take one thunder damage. <laughs> hmm. Boing! Interesting. I suppose booming blade, does that make your, your regular damage magical? Magical blood um, It is I, anyway, though, because it's your hex weapon, isn't it? 
It yeah. is not though. No, I'm not wielding my hex weapon. Oh, interesting. I'm wielding oh, a mix I because I felt that smushing spiders yeah. might perhaps be more effective than slashing. But yeah. I could be wrong about that. So you'd think, um, but in the you keep smashing, smashing, you're only able to get so much surface area, and it seems like the smushing damage isn't as effective as you would think. Okay. That's good to know. Though a significant amount of them have now been squished. I've just been accused of sounding like puss in boots. <laughs> uh oh. I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. I keep telling everyone it's Princess Bride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, your new name is Waldo. So. Yes, a better name. Yes, Waldo. <laughs> yes, yes, Waldo. Waldo. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, cool. Um, good deal. Now we are on to Mary. Uh, as she as she slowly backs away from these swarms, um, she turns her attention to the one that looks like it has a decent amount of them left, um, and the uh, the marionette begins to contort in like a in a very strange way, as if it was mocking a spider's movement. Um, and I'm going to try and cast vicious mockery on a spider for four damage, but they have Ooh. to make a save first, my bad. Um, it is a wisdom saving throw of 13. Okay. Why is it for them? red? Because it's a uh, it's For a green. So, so, why is it for, why, why is so it for green? It's because it's, it's, it's max damage. damage. Max damage. Oh. Max roll. Is that a new thing? Do you now get green for max damage? For, for the highest roll on a die that you can do in, yeah. in roll 20. You, if you also look at the huh. the damage breakdown, if any of the die are max, it'll be green. So yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, Things you learn over the roll. So. Mm -hmm. But speaking of wisdom saves, um, I've got a uh, negative one. Oh, <laughs> do they take four psychic damage as they are so insulted by the way this mannequin is moving? Like, oh, the fucking spider. Um, they are really hurt by this. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, let's see. So yeah, you as you're looking at that swarm and making them do that, you notice that their movements start to mimic your marionette. And as the marionette uh, becomes more, uh, the, the movements become faster, the spiders mimic it, but too fast for their own bodies. And you see limbs begin to break in half. You see some of them <laughs> begin to just fold over on, on themselves just absolutely deconstructing with the ferocity of the movements mimicking your marionette. And they crumple, twisted, gnarled, and dead. That swarm is defeated. Three remain. Hmm. Oh, I then cool. look at uh, the very manly uh, Waldo. Um, no, just Waldo! Um, and uh, she she turns to face him, and uh, the marionette turns from this, like, bent kind of uh, spider appearance to uh, a sort of a puppet of, of Jeswaldo and he is doing amazing feats and he is being very graceful in his maneuverability and you feel inspired um, so you have a d6 body inspiration it would cool. contrast to my poisoned very well yes <laughs> uh, alright Elimus Elimus will point his staff and get Gelusomnus and a beam of cold light will come flying out and aim towards one of the spider thingamajigs. Uh, 13? Is just above what you need. I was going to say, that would be a 19 with inspiration. <laughs> uh, it's only four cold damage, though. Uh, did you... Uh, you don't need to roll the inspiration. Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, I won't. I did, I'll, yeah. Yeah, I would I would keep that. Cool. So four cold damage. And with four, you see a number of tiny spiders turn into mini tiny spider popsicles on the ground. <laughs> Freezing them solid. Just one of and them stuck to uh, Sarif's tongue. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he, he'll love some cider pop. There's spider pops there in a second. Spider pops. Yeah. Spider pops. Maris. On still now at Ingalls. 
So, does Maris? She's gotten rid of all the spiders on her body. Yes. Or are they still on her? They. Um, you you stepped away, but they rejoined your <laughs> body when you weren't when you they on their turn. They're following you. <laughs> oh my god, how flattering. Um, <laughs> I will cast in. Can I cast inflict wounds on them since they are like touching me? Yeah, yeah. They okay. Touch range spell, definitely. You don't uh, even have to touch them with your hands. You could just like emit inflict wounds. Yeah, I'm going to emit some inflict wounds. Okay. Go for it. Inflict away. Why does it do that like 27 times? Um, do good. we get to take the first one? For always the first one, yes. Great. Okay, well, it's a 24. Yes, very nice. And with that, the, the ones around you wither and die. They sort of dry out and you suddenly feel where there were things squirming around inside your armor. You feel like a bit of a crunching sound as if they dried out into the husks. Of We're gonna have spiders. to clean your armor out later. <laughs> They're <laughs> desiccated corpses. <laughs> Just chitinous dust. Mm. <laughs> Great. Surrounds you. Been on the windowsill all summer, dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Totally Just kind of spinning on the thread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Cool. Anything else? Uh, no, she's pretty happy that she killed some spiders. <laughs> cool. There's actually a fly in my face. Sorry, I'm not just like swatting for kicks. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. All right, we've got one last swarm. Let's see, we're going to be attacking either just Waldo or Claire. Just hmm. Waldo is dodging. Waldo is dodging. Spiders are dumb. And will attack at disadvantage. Um, I wish you could see my screen with two twenties at the disadvantage. Double seventeens oh. on the rolls. Well, I'm both sorry, of those friend. do not hit. You have a twenty-one armor class. You said double seventeens. Oh, I see. Double seventeens plus their attack bonus. Yes, I do yes. not have a twenty-one armor class. I have a okay. nineteen armor class. My goodness. Uh, thankfully, they are weakened heavily from the attacks, and you only take seven points of damage. Piece That's of still quite a lot. <laughs> um, and I assume it is my turn? It is. Let me take care of my seven points of damage. Um, I will step out of their space, and I will attempt to stab as many of them as I can very quickly with my rapier. Okay. Have at you! Loading, loading. <laughs> oh, with a natural one on no. the attack. <laughs> Won't quite do it. You are playing. Um, what is it called? Uh, what, what's the game where you do the dagger between the fingers? It's <laughs> called very dangerous, is what it's called. I, I just sort of you know, just sort of a bunch of spiders waving, <laughs> nice waving the rapier, just <laughs> just waving it around. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. that's good. Dancing with very high kicks with my just sort of. <laughs> I, like, I like to imagine the marionette that's like doing the chess while they're like he's like you know doing something valiant. Just just sees this so, and it just. What what did we what did we determine their AC was? Could I, I get it with the D six roll? I think natural one's a natural, natural one is an automatic auto miss. Oh, of course, yes, it is. Even if you had a plus thirty, you would miss with a natural one. <sighs> you will always hit with a natural twenty. Yeah. Very good. All right, Claire. All just right. Waldo seems to be on the struggle bus. As oh, <laughs> boy. Okay, so uh, using the wisdom that I gleaned last round, I will switch weapons and uh, draw my. I can, I'll just drop the the mace and draw my my sword. So, in, in case I, I I kind of worked it through my own brain as I was thinking out loud. So. Oh. The only information you have is that the bludgeoning damage did not seem super effective. So. Okay. That's fine. All right. I'm trying something different. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, Try oh, what did, I did. did. It they, was very did effective. The, um, the spiders, did they move? Just out of curiosity. 
Uh, the ones that you booming bladed were yeah. it, were Chris bladed. Oh, where where is something that I can attack? Uh, you can move just in f just about five feet. They've been the ones that have been chasing just well, though. Yeah, oh. five or ten feet. So. To them, Claire! Uh... To them! To them, Claire! <laughs> okay. Um. So long sword. Uh, I'm gonna try to slash at them as best I can while not hitting just while those ass. Um, that's a 19 to hit. Yes. Um, and 12 damage with my hex weapon. Nice. Um, the, <laughs> the slashing damage is not super effective, and you kill quite a few of them in a couple quick slices, but just a handful and i mean like a handful remain okay mary you're up there are two of you indeed um so i presume there's so there's still that swarm left right there's just there's just the one and it seems to be very dissipated i think i'm gonna try and just salt in it again uh the marionette begins to do that horrific motion um, as it did before. Um, if you could do a, a lovely wisdom saving throw for me. A lovely one? I don't know about Love that. One. This time I have a 15. Okay, uh, so then you take um, does he does I don't know whether you deal half are... damage on a save or is it nothing? I don't I don't see it saying anything about a half, so I'm assuming it takes nothing. Okay. Which is unfortunate. Uh, they're not, you're not quite able to get into their heads this time. They're just not looking. <laughs> they're just not looking at me. They're looking at me! With all eight <laughs> eyes. Yes, they are. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Elimus. Elimus is just looking at this world, I'm thinking... Oh. But they're spiders, you understand. He understands because he hates spiders themselves and then just beams another uh, ray of frost at the spider swarm. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. For 13 to hit again for another 4 damage. Okay. You only did one. And with that one damage, you... Uh... You scatter a couple that go spinning across like little pieces of hail and sleet with a little spider in the middle. <sighs> and all seems quiet. <sighs> except for Jeswaldo. <sighs> it's just with a very bad morning. Hmm. Eris goes over and gives a little pat on the back. By way of making you feel better. Uh, was there a cure wounds attached to that pat on the back? Uh, and then also she's like, wouldn't it be so nice if I gave some cure wounds to him? And so, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you mean? You've got more hit points than me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm um, uh, Can you roll that, that heal for me? Yes, I am. Just, um, Maris, make sure you that uh, clean out your armor later. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Nine, good one. Mary heads over to um. Uh, oh my god, Alimus, and um begins like wiping the the dead spiders off of him and like making sure he's all clean and tidy. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, they're on your clothes. I've, one bit me here, and he shows. I wanna, me. I wanna find a few of the frozen ones and pass them back to Saurif. Um, Saurif loves them. <laughs> like ice pops. No, nobody, nobody go close to that body. I think there's some poison gas inside it. <laughs> Good. What? As well, though, after a minute, it just it uh, subsides. Oh, <laughs> I, I feel bad now. Is the right. body still there after this, um, like, encounter of the, the spiders? Is the body still on the ground? It seems or to be. Has it 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, it's there. It's... Oh. I want to use my mage hand to try and see if I can find anything on the body. Maybe identification, maybe anything that might tell us who this person is. Um, sure. You just see the marionette kind of as if it's reaching outwards and then you see the actual hand go through. Yeah, go ahead and make an investigation check. Because I don't, I don't want to touch him myself. That's Seems fair. Uh, Limus will walk up to Mary's while this is happening and show his collarbone where there's a bite mark. Does this look infected? Uh, I I will have a look. Oh, to me or to Mary's? He knows it. Mary's. Yeah, he knows that call, she's call, very... call me um, strings for now, because otherwise I'm going to get confused. <laughs> He would never call you strings. <laughs> Can Maris roll a medicine check? It Absolutely, it. Maris may. All right. I got a nine on investigation. Okay, yeah, you're kind of peek around, but lifting with the mage hand, these clothes, especially after the um, sort of explosion of decay that happened, are um, uh, just a little bit wet with this um, uh. decay, and it's it's hard to, to pick them up and look around. Um, though, he's not even wearing shoes, um, and the, the clothes are tattered and simple, almost like burlap. So um, it seems perhaps prisoner's garb or just something they put him in to execute him. It's, uh, don't find anything particularly interesting. Does he still look like me? Um, More so. To you? Yes. Okay. And to you, tattered robes. And an even more gaunt figure than you currently possess. Uh, let's see. Medicine of 19. Um, yep, yeah, you look at the... Seven. Seven, yeah. Was oh, the first roll. yeah. <laughs> um, Not as useful. <laughs> You first to like look and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. That's a he's like, that's a mole, and you're like, oh, here's the bite mark. <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, it looks okay. <laughs> For now, but get that, but get that mole yeah. checked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that was my role play version of me saying I'm hurt. But yeah, right. yes. Would you Would you like me to help you out? Oh, right, only if you've got some spare. I do. I do. I don't want to take all your resources. Well, uh, this was a very terrible place. Can we go? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think we've uh, diverted enough time and resources into this location. Uh, we should press on. Uh, is it north to Falaki? Or which direction is it to Falaki? From here. <laughs> what was Irina um, doing doing all of this? <laughs> yeah, that's true. What was she doing? <laughs> um, She was um <laughs> that's funny uh she was there um mostly just uh as the spiders were coming crawling any crawling towards her feet she was quickly stabbing with the rapier and she will um apologize for not being um as effective she will steal herself more uh readily against uh, the next combat all right it's all right Marie. Before leaving the gallows area, um, the marionette will sort of strike a, a hand over its its face, um, and she's going to use minor illusion to try and make the corpse's head look like um, what's her name? Elenka. 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 Um, and she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna turn to a line messenger say, "Does it still look like you now? To you?" Um, hang on. Uh, uh, depends what the will save is. Uh, wisdom save is. Um, you see the illusion. Yeah, I could regardless see it's whether or not it. you want to see through it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can. You you saw her cast it. You probably know, or did yeah. you try and hide that from him, Mary? No, no, no. Or... He, he, she just wanted to see if like no matter what he just saw it as yeah so you see her begin to cast a spell and you see the illusion form and you see the head the um sort of parted over hair and the half shaven head of 
um, Alenka <laughs> and the pointed ears. Um, fine tricks, there. sister. Fine tricks. And they will turn around to Maurice and say, thank you, Maurice. That, that, I feel far better now. Thank you. Oh, this sure. is a bit of curiosity. How long will that stay on? <laughs> Question. One minute. Oh, okay. Minute, yeah. I thought it would be funny if it lasted longer and like a like a like came up the hill or something and saw herself. <laughs> the fuck. Um, but no. Uh, we should probably uh, pack ourselves up, keep moving. Is this the only reason why we were here? Was there some reason we had to come here? Uh, I was. Well, we were looking to see whether um something was um. If there was any sign of something being buried amongst the dead, remember um, there was this crossroads of life and death among the buried dead business for the uh, the northmost card of our tarot reading. Yes, the thief. Yes. Do we believe that's here? Uh, I just thought it was a it was worth checking. That's why I was asking you to look at the graves earlier. With Alimus's intelligence, would would that make sense that it's here, Peter? Um. Yeah, I mean it, it. It could be. Um, the 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 very words she said were at the crossroads of life and death among the buried dead. That's true. Then we need to do some digging. grave digging. Oh, doesn't our uh, lizard friend have something very useful for that? Mm, he does he have does. move earth. I'm not sure if he's physically up for it. Question mark. You see his eye kind of poke up along with the mouth that's just sort of you know frogs don't really have teeth so he's just kind of gumming on a yeah. um a uh, frozen a spider <laughs> spider pop yeah. yummy is there, is there a shovel nearby or any digging implements um you know make a perception check with my obviously investigation of uh 27 do i uh, did i not notice anything specific about any one grave or um, no, you could tell the order in which they were buried, but, um, you know, as far as one of them may have, none of them seem to have been disturbed in the last few weeks, at least, you know, then. I turn to Claire again. Does it say anything about when they were buried, like, in number? In uh, we didn't have any information related to that. Again, this is just, uh, it occurred to me as a possibility that was worth checking out. Um, if there's no, like... I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I want to spend all day digging up, what did you say, like 37 graves? The thief, the thief, did it not have a number attached to the card as well? It was the seven, seven. of coins. Mm -hmm. The seven of coins, well, why don't we try digging the seventh grave? The seventh grave. I would suggest the seventh and maybe the last and the first, if, if, if the seventh is unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. I also got a 19 on perception. Okay. Um, looking around, no, there don't seem to be any tools here. I did check my inventory. Unfortunately, I'm not equipped with a shovel, so. And I suspect we would be rather slow without equipment. Sarif, make yourself useful. <laughs> All right. We can use Sariv for the uh, sole purpose of doing some move earth. Dig the earth, froggy. <laughs> no, he would have to come out of that. Food cast a spell. Sorry, sorry, not feeling well. Sorry, Alimus doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Alimus doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Lee does. Alimus doesn't. He's like, mm, I am needed. Then we'll eat more spider pops. That was really good, Peter. I know. <laughs> it's like he's here. <laughs> I'll point to a grave. We need to see what's inside this. Try not to disturb too much inside. And no I uh, in there. don't see why, but okay. And uh, we'll Make sense. go ahead and use Move Earth. Whoever picked that grave, go ahead and roll a D100 roll. Percentage. Um... I guess it was B. Mm -hmm. Okay. A D100. This is a first for me. Boop. I rolled a seven. <laughs> Which seems appropriate. Wow. Yeah. 
It'd be really hilarious if what we were looking for was here. Yep. But I suspect um, Please be there. That'd be amazing. Yeah, you dig and you find this skeleton that seems to be um, wrapped, almost mummified, it seems. Um, though the arms are not crossed at the shoulders, they are crossed around the neck. And you see a gold chain around the neck. Though the hands obscure whatever is beneath it. Well, I rolled the number, but I'm not going to be the person who touches that thing. Oh, yet. fine. I'll... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Maybe give me some time. Let me start preparing a spell. Or I... you could... Mari could mage hand, right? Yes, I could just grab it with my mage hand. Yeah, sure. I step back. I step uh, back behind Elibus. I step back behind just while well, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's backwards posturing. <laughs> the, mar the marionette begins to reach his hand forward, then turns to look at them and begins doing like the chicken arms, um, and then goes back to, to reaching forward. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I use my mage hand again to try and pick up this uh, locket. Okay, yeah, you're able... Um... Well, so you tug at the hands, actually. So you only have five pounds you're able to lift, lift with the mage hand. Yeah. And you're able to tug a bit at the chain and stuff and move. But these are old um, uh, uh, rigor mortis hands, which are clutching at the... Okay. Fight. No puppet calls. Just while the Tocarembo, La Tome del Fuego, Santa Maria, Zacatega, the Hotel de Santa Cruz de la Rosa, a coward. And he jumps into the grave and picks up whatever this golden thing is. Okay. I turn to you Claire hope. and say, I think I've figured out how to get him to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's tuck that away for future use. You Mar rip... Marie just turns and winks. <laughs> nice. You rip at the chain and the hands, the fingers break away. <laughs> and you pull up what looks to be the medallion and see a flash of red in front of your face. Startles you for a second, but sitting there, spinning at the end of the chain, is an amulet of Ooh. death and de los de los muertos. Oh shit! We found something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Damn, let's dig up all the graves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like Jacks there for a second. Um, I think I found something. Can I? Can I have a look? Uh, yes, I hold it up. Um, Limus, you're well. It, it's it's a holy symbol. Um, is there anything recognizable? Well, I'm you know. How do you yeah, know it's a holy symbol? Because there's a thing on that just came up on roll twenty that says it's called the holy symbol of Ravenkind. <laughs> it's kind of labeled, but um, go ahead. We believe in labels. Check. Yeah. Could I also make a religion check? I sure. Or one of you can make it with advantage. Yeah. Uh, it just has the. It still I has did, the I did just try. I just rolled a got twelve. It. <laughs> um, do you want to try, or do you want to give me advantage, Maris? Uh, I... You you should do it. You should absolutely do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can try. Nah, oh, you both rolled. That's eighteen. Still good. Eighteen. Um, this is pretty undoubtedly a holy symbol it and um, with that it r reminds you of older um, older symbols related to Lathander more ancient ones that you would see in very 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 old texts so just while he reaches out his finger and sort of touches it and spins it around a little. Seems to be fine. Um, Elimus, are you able to detect anything out of the ordinary magical about this? Well, uh, he doesn't actually touch it, but he looks at it and says, I will need time just to cast a spell. I... Um, how deep was the grave? How how far did they have to mold the earth to to get to the body? It was not particularly deep, maybe about uh, five 
five to six feet. Um, sorry, do you do you think you could do it again before we? Uh, I mean, uh, feel free to try and identify, but I'm curious as to see if every single one is buried with this. So maybe it's something to do with he keeping oh. the soul at rest. If if they hung it or or something along those lines, why would they leave it with the body? That's this is question. clearly placed. They, they, the body is dead when they bury it. Why would it be clutching at it? The the ravens are meant to carry the lost souls. Maybe this is Maybe something to do alive. with it. Whoa. I feel like he'd be a bit more panicked than restful. Well, it, it was wrapped in, in bandages. Maybe it was completely wrapped and trapped. Couldn't move. Couldn't get out. Hmm. That's... I'm really sorry I just said that out loud. That sounds horrible. Is, uh, what was the... Was there any marking on the grave that we dug this one up on? There were no markings on any of the graves. Hmm. I'm going to start preparing my spell anyway. Yeah. All right, well, true. I'll wear it until you are ready. <laughs> no? No, I shouldn't? Uh, <laughs> Marie just, like, puts... Uh, like, with the mage hand still out, it just, like, puts a hand in front of your face, like, to stop. It's like... Maybe don't wear it just yet. Uh, Allow yes, my brother okay. to do his work first. Very good. Uh, start sort of like sprinkling some dust around. I'm worried who's the bigger idiot, the lizard or just Waldo. <laughs> and, uh, and then start speaking the words Magicia Depelhende and then carry on repeating wants those to, words can... over and over. Yeah, if Sari was willing to do the mold earth again on, a, on another grave just to see if it, it is the same. Um, you will uproot a bunch of the uh, soil and such, and you will find a much smaller humanoid skeleton buried. Does it have a chain? Doesn't seem to. Mm -hmm. Just a skeleton. This might be let's... a unique situation. Yeah, let's cover him back yeah. up. I'll cover them. When sorry it is done, I think we'll, we're asking him to um, recover the graves. Um, and then when he's done, if he wants to hop back up into my hood to rest, he can. Okay, he, he will do so. Marie just watches him in the hood intently, maybe making him uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think sorry gets uncomfortable. Um, all right. So anyone doing anything else while Elimus casts his spell? Just um, gonna... Here, me, this let's take this opportunity cast? to clean out your armor, Maris. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> spider, 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 Ugh. spider. Um, and I I Rena will also say that uh, that looks like a, a very well-crafted symbol of the Morning Lord, don't you think? The sun that we saw on the church? And the rest? Well, I can tell you this much. It is made of platinum. <laughs> can you? Yes, it's obvious. It's uh, too heavy to be silver and uh, very, uh, very shiny, like gold. I have seen a few um, pieces of platinum before, but this doesn't look particularly like that. Wishful thinking, maybe? Are you a metallurgist? Just Waldo? Uh, no, I just happen to have had my hands on quite a bit of platinum once upon a time. Hmm. And Good for you. And no longer. Well, do you see it around me? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be very useful here, I don't think. Fair enough. Oh, it is, well. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it is platinum, by the it way. Platinum. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, I, I hadn't read that part. Um, is, is it actually platinum? Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, all right, Elimus, what? are you casting identify? Um, I'd never got my pearl, so he can't. Oh, oh, then what are you? What are you? He was casting to take magic. Okay. Oh. Yeah, he asked for the pearl from from the lady, but I don't know if I got it or not. 
Uh, from who? Irena. Remember Ellie, Essie asked for me. Essie asked um, Irena and um, her brother. For the pearl. Whether they had a pearl. Right. Um, they did not. No. So he's just casting so. Detect Magic then. Okay. Detect Magic Do goes I off. Do I have a pearl? There's an, a, a what? Do I have no, a pearl? No, unless, unless someone has... Uh, found a place to purchase a pearl worth at least 100 gold pieces. Uh, Maybe Sauri found one in the river? Uh, you know. Uh, he, he doesn't like those ones. Cause he left all those oysters in there because... Quit to eat. Come an oyster. Yeah. Uh, Come an oyster really quick. <laughs> but this emits an immensely powerful aura of abjuration magic. This is extremely powerful. I... Indeed, um, in fact, it's you, you find enchantment, abjuration, and conjuration magic all emanating from it. Okay, I relay that information. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend wearing it until I know what it is. It may be cursed. Oh, I and I, I don't really want to hold it then. I do have a spell that can identify it, but I need a pearl. A big pearl, if We're anyone fresh finds out of one. Those. We can keep an eye out. Um, well, since we found what we were looking for, um, we should probably Good thinking, press on. Claire, by the way. By the way. Yeah, I have... mean, I was... I don't know, I, frankly, I thought this wasn't going to pan out for us. It seemed a little too obvious, but... You know, you take the blessings when they come. Well, would you like this? I, I mean, I'm happy to hold on to it. There. there you are. All right. I'll uh, pocket that. Keep it. If you decide space. to sell it, I think we should split it. <laughs> any any resources that we acquired as a group, I certainly would distribute as a group. Mm. So you split it into six pieces. No. Yeah. <laughs> the amulet you is going into a pocket. Break it like a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cookie. Oh, no, we'll just do that thing cookie. like in Harry Potter where we all take like a time holding the same thing and yeah. just like after a little <laughs> while we swap over and pass it over. <laughs> yeah. Um no, I'll I'll just pocket it. Um put it put it someplace in my my being that is safe. I'm not okay. swallowing it though. Got it. <laughs> it sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> As you guys finish this up, you hear a sound. Elimus hears it first, but in just a second, the rest of you hear it. That sounds like the slow trotting of a horse hmm. upon cobblestone. Someone's coming up the road. Should we try to hide? Get oh. off the road, quick! We need to get away from the graves. Hide that symbol. I'll take it, um, with, during that 10 minutes, I'll take it, sorry, is filled the graves back in, yeah? Um, yes, it it took basically just two actions for him to do that. Okay. okay. Yeah, then we'll... we'll perhaps get off out of eyesight, but... Okay. Um, go ahead and make a... Are you guys, like, moving off into the woods then? How, where are you guys choosing to hide? Um, I would sound okay. You've got a gallows on one side, you've got a small gravestones on the other. I wasn't suggesting we hide, side. it was more so oh, okay. of let's get away from the graves mm -hmm. to make us not look like we're grave ah. robbers. Right. Oh, okay. Yep, I agree. Okay, uh, so you move away. Just, just while we'll go back and lean against the gallows again. <laughs> Surely it couldn't happen um, twice. Uh, it was, that's just what he's thinking. Next to um, the as... rotting corpse of Alenka. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, he stays far away from that. <laughs> well that illusion has likely faded by now yeah uh so you look down the road the direction it's coming from and the view beyond 50 feet beyond or even 30 feet is obscured by mist and the sound grows a little louder and it is accompanied by you know you hear the, the hoof claps against stone but you also hear what seems to be just a sound kind of creaking along with it as well and in just a 
moment, through the mist comes what seems to be a skeletal horse, an enormous horse, like a war horse. And atop it is a rider, also skeletal. He seems to be wearing rusted old bits of armor. Seems to be half a breastplate, one bracer, and two greaves, holding a lantern out in front of him. He makes it a few more feet towards you and reins in the horse. Empty eye sockets scan back and forth before settling towards the group. And he holds out the lantern. It is simply an iron shell, no light inside. And the horse starts to slowly trot forward to your direction. It, does it again. seem like it's seen us? Well, what are I doing? I don't believe. <laughs> Just no, it, it is just like... simply holding a lantern in your direction, and then it sort of grabs the reins and leans forward and holds out the lantern. Just watching it to see if it makes anything aggressive moves. Yeah. The lantern swings back and forth. Out. It turns the horse down the road. And it stops again, looks back towards where you were, again leans forward with a lantern. And then looks forward on its path. begins to gallop down the path. Which direction is he headed? Um, from here, he is headed to the southwest, the path that you have not yet taken. And there was a, were there markers for these paths? Mm -hmm. Which, which one is this? So um, there is a sign you just came from the Tsar pool, which is right. marked on the sign. To the east, the sign marks Barovia. Mm -hmm. And to the uh, southwest is Castle Ravenloft and Valaki. Okay. Well. Was he uh... speaking undead and saying Uber? I heard out. I heard out yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah. That, I like I, Uber. I'm thinking that was either him saying, hey, get in, I'll take you out, as in out of the mists, or he was trying to get out, and he's been trying to get out for a very long time. I, the whole, the whole exchange, Marie just had like a beaming smile watching this like skeleton and the horse, and then I think I think he just wants us to get out. I presume we have disturbed the peace. I agree. That's the impression I got. Uh, then, yeah. then yes, I, I, let's get out. We're happy to <laughs> well, do that. I mean, that's the direction we need to head anyway, so... Yeah. All right. If we see him again, I might try to get out. I'm just... <laughs> let's follow the spooky, scary skeleton. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Jaswaldo, I have a question. Do you still think this is a dream? Uh, no, no, I our encounter with Madame Ava. Ah. Something about it. Uh, <laughs> also, I'm very disturbed to realize that uh, in this place, if you die, your soul stays. That's another thing we learned. Oh, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, you missed that conversation. <laughs> Well, just try I, um, really hard not to die, Jess, Waldo. I try that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying right now, believe it or not. You've just well, said so you wanted to get on the, the 
with the skin. Yes, not really. I mean, okay. part of me does, but... Well, so, Maurice, you, know. you do not want to hurt any ravens, or you will be cursed. Like Sarif. I mean, things are crazy and horrible here. Just when I think they can't be more crazy or horrible, they somehow become so, but... I don't know. I am curious. Well, Aren't you? Where Where did he come from? Where is he going? I mean, we'll definitely keep an eye out for him. He galloped off, though. Like, we're not catching up with that shit. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, he, he did gallop, start to gallop, or, you know, go to yeah. a fast canter, at least. Well, I'm I'm going to push a brisk walking pace as we go down the path. Assuming everyone is done with whatever they need to do with the yeah. graveyard. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, did I pick up any other magic from any of the other graves? Probably too deep down. You did not. Okay. Um, so, the path continues to the southwest mm-hmm. before curving up north through the same woods that you descended through before, but this time you're sort of ascending up a hillside. You're in an open field for a bit, sort of a bald, before the forest begins to close again on each side of you. It goes this way for quite a while, pine trees on either side, um, standing tall, though unshaking, unwavering. And then after about an hour or so, you emerge from the woods the path turns once again to the north and you reach or you hear in the distance a hiss which seems to be a and then it turns into a roaring sound the sound of water likely the sound of a waterfall in the distance uh, Mary in your travels before you will know that there is a large beautiful waterfall at the far north end of the Tsar pool If you guys fancy a break, there's a beautiful spot up ahead. A gorgeous waterfall. You know, I do still kind of feel those spiders crawling on me. I could take a break. Sure. Sure. So you follow this dirt road just a bit further as it climbs or it clings to the side of really the mountain to your left. Uh, the Mount Gakis, or to your left, yeah, Mount Gakis uh, looms snow-capped in the distance. The road winds just a bit around, and you come to an arching bridge of mold-encrusted stone that spans a huge natural chasm. Gargoyles cloaked in black moss are perched on the corners of the bridge. Their frowns are weather-worn. On on the mountainous side of the bridge, a waterfall spills into a misty pool nearly a thousand feet below. The pool feeds a river that meanders into the fog-shrouded pines that blanket the valley. You can almost see just the faintest glimmer of an orange firelight a thousand feet down and down and and off into the distance likely where the encampment where you spent the night, but it is quite a ways down. Is it a bit of the water, the mist from the waterfall gently coming in contact with your skin. So there's not a pool here for like swimming or anything like that. It's just a, no far below there is, but you are seeing you're kind of up near the top of a waterfall that spills down into a pool below. This has not been that sort of day. What do you think? It's absolutely it's, stunning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is beautiful. The only contrast might be these black moss-covered gargoyles that kind of sit watch on the corners of the bridge. They've always been there, right? Like, have I seen them before? Um, go ahead and make a general intelligence check. Let's see if I'm good Let's at this. Alimus is not interested in the view. He's actually keeping an eye on the gargoyles. 
Uh, just a flat intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, why won't you roll? Nope. Try to find out. Uh, it's going to do it 500 click, times. Click. Click. <laughs> All right. I'm trying. We'll get a few of them at okay. some point. There, there we go. go. 19. Yes. You remember seeing them in the past, though even the look of them now is a bit eerier than you remember. Perhaps it's the new company, perhaps not being part of the traveling troop that you were in past in the past uh, makes you feel a bit uneasy, but you remember them. All right. It's just a shame those are so sad. You don't um <clears throat> Some people I know back home uh, uh, he once informed me that bridges were very good places to um, waylay travelers. Do such things happen here? It's never happened to me. Mm. But then again, I was traveling with a big group. Uh, DM, does this look like a place that would be good for an ambush? So it is a long bridge. It's fairly wide, but it is maybe a hundred feet across. It is a grand stone bridge, though somewhat moss encrusted and not as not as uh, shiny and new looking as it once was. And on either side, it's about a thousand feet down. So take that as you will. Um, this is perhaps not the place you'd like to get stuck. Do we have the way? Does there appear to be anybody coming towards us? Uh, make a perception check. I've rolled a 16. Okay. You look off in the distance. It's tough to... You keep finding little new places where the mist meets the horizon once again, but as far as the mist reveals, you see nothing. And there's room, you said very wide, there's definitely room that if something comes charging down the bridge, there'll be room for it to get by us without well, us like knocking us off the bridge. You think a pair of a pair of stately carriages could pass each other abreast and there would be room for them, so yeah. It it seems safe. For now. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to try that out. Well, let's get a move on then. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, head across the bridge. Okay. Uh, you start to make your way across the stone. The gargoyles unmoving, frowning. About halfway across, the roar of the the uh, waterfall is almost makes it uh, hard to speak to one another. If you are indeed speaking, um, you have to speak up just a bit. You make it to the other end and the backs, the wings of the two gargoyles in front of you are splayed out as if it, they were about to take flight, though unmoving. Do you continue on? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Yes. Continue past them. You can't help but think as you look to the side that one of them is looking to the side with its wings wide out. Continue on back onto the ground. The sound of the waterfall, the roar begins to lessen somewhat. And you are across the path curves to the north. Well, okay. Carry unless on. Unless anyone uh, needs anything, yeah, we'll press on. Uh, just a little meta game. Would anybody benefit from a short rest? Spells? Anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, but <clears throat> I didn't know if we were going to rest at all. Yeah. Can I how, get... How long have we been walking? Uh, this took about two 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 and a half hours to get um to get here 
Okay. From the gravesite? Mm, yeah. Uh, no, not counting the gravesite rest from from your your original departure in the morning. Okay. Forgive my confusion. I thought we were following uh, the where the skeleton was heading, which was south. But Southwest. we're now heading north. It curved. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the, we're now heading north. Yes. Are we heading to the place that we DM'd about? Um, yes. Yeah, I told you. Eventually. But you just okay. know that that's a that's a detour that's possible. So you'll okay. know when that comes up. I just wanted okay. to So it's not so it's not like I'm he we're heading there no, right now. Not directly. Cool. So cool, 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 cool. I and just so you know, I gave her just a little bit of Fistani lore that she would know from having grown up in the camp about Makes a location. Total sense. Um yeah. So heading further north, you see another crossroads. Sort of going straight and further north is a sign that reads Valaki. And to your right, another path. The signpost there reads Castle Ravenloft. Let's not go there. That's a silly place. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Velaki is our intended destination, so I think we should head in that direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good very Fairly good. soon, you reach another place. Okay, so Barovia. Which I will show you in the chat. I think it popped up for you guys. Ooh. The fog spills out of the forest <laughs> to swallow up the road behind you. Ahead, jutting from the impenetrable woods on both sides of the road are high stone buttresses looming gray in the fog. Huge iron gates hang on the stonework. Dew clings with cold tenacity to the rusted bars and two headless statues of armed guardians flank the gate, their heads now lying among the weeds at their feet. They greet you, only with silence. Are the gates shut? They appear to be, yes. Um, I'd like to go forward and check out the gate <laughs> okay see if maybe it's uh locked but i given my uh previous experience with uh touching a locked door and then having it suddenly eat me um i would like to just perceive it first out of a degree of caution see uh, if okay. i'd notice any details about it sure. Maris could always just go in guns blazing and do a, a thaumaturgy <laughs> It's my favorite thing to do. It's just, like, bust things open. <laughs> uh, I rolled an 11 on that perception. Okay. Um, you get a little closer. It's hard to make make out. Is there a lock? These are enormous doors, by the way. Okay. Like, multiple stories high, iron gates. Okay. And as you walk forward, um, Claire, you guys see Claire walking forward, and some of the mist begins to swirl about her feet and close in near her. And you guys hear... As they simply swing open in front of her. Oh, good. <laughs> that was a me trick. Change my pants and then follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you grew out of that. Uh, <laughs> still a problem. All right, I'm uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> One diaper change later. <laughs> Let's was, go. Was there? Is there sign of anyone manning these gates at all? I mean, how did they open? Magic. Well, at that, now. Marie looks up to the top of the gates and just curtsies and then continues onwards so if anyone was looking <laughs> she's being polite you have such a lovely Ooh, relationship know. with um, inanimate objects <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she, she just laughs at that 
This is uh, the only thing I get along with, really. Oh, you're doing a fine job. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Limus, you good? <laughs> yep, good now. All right. Uh, through the moving on its own archway. Does it look like the doors are meant to keep people out or in? Well, it seemed pretty fortified from the side you were pre you were on. Um, and there were, you know, enormous stone guardians holding swords. Um, that seems like an exterior feature, but you haven't seen the other side either. Okay, we head in. Okay, all of you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not wearing anything on their butts. <laughs> As you pass through air gets a little colder and the wind blows a bit and you hear a <laughs> as they seem to have crashed shut behind you well, look at Irena have you never has... come this way never come this way before um I simply don't recall the gates. I haven't been to Valaki since I was younger. Um, I but can but see you why went people and don't then... go more often now. <laughs> but but you went and and successfully returned. Yes, I did. Not that you want to return, of course. But uh, no, I'm, your point's taken. But yes, I I made it safely. Well, then I should think we're fine. Perhaps yeah. we should keep moving. Agreed. What is visibility like for us within the city? Um, so in this area, there is... Sorry, did you say city? Yeah, or within the gates. So the gates have closed. Is yeah, it you now see you're misty or... going into a forest. It is misty once again. You have maybe a few hundred feet of visibility at times. At times, the mists swirl closer to you and you are blocked from anything beyond 60 feet. Okay. Um, right now you're in a misty woods but that changes quickly as the trees part and ahead of you on a path the, the road kind of curves around to your right but on a side path there is an old decrepit windmill sitting upon a hill Does it by any chance resemble a giant? <laughs> it's a little I bit have... of a Spanish literature oh, yes. uh, humor for you. Uh, <laughs> funny. I, uh, I think we should take another route. Maybe head um, back. What? So you know that the, this is an offshoot. It's like you can take a path to the windmill or you can keep going the direction you are going. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, so you Marina don't want to go near the going, No, she just keeps going on straight. Any particular reason? Well, that, like, so I guess in, in character she wouldn't have said, I, th I thought we were heading that way, my mistake. So she wouldn't have said anything, she would have just kept going the, the path hmm. onwards. Hmm. Uh, Mari, do you know anything about that windmill, being local? Didn't we see that windmill in a f in a picture? Oh, they're right. That's right. The um, in the house. That's right. That house. They uh. They had a windmill. Windmills all over the place. Mm. Yeah. One um, likes inanimate objects more than I do. Then I guess um, we should just keep going. It's not good to go there. It's forbidden among the Vistani, so we probably shouldn't. And she um, just keeps going as if uh, she's that, not even like. That, that's that's good. Thing? That's good enough for me. <laughs> Claire, anything about this windmill in the notes? I'm checking that. <laughs> I do remember there was a painting. The painting of a was windmill. In the house, yeah. Um, I mean, there were crests of windmills, but I do believe there was also a painting. Um, does that? 
which I believe I said I took a minute to look at to try to mm -hmm. memorize what it looked like. Does that uh, bear any resemblance to the view that we see here? Remarkable similarity. Ah. Mm, guys, I'm really curious. Ah, <laughs> uh, Claire, I have just... I only just met you and I feel like we shared some bonding last night. You're probably one of the people I've been closest to for a long time now. Mm -hmm. and, and I ask of you that we do not go to this windmill and we keep What's going that, on this. I just know we shouldn't go there. I'm telling you all I know. I just know we shouldn't go there. DM, when she says it is forbidden to the Vistani, is she, telling, forbidden. The, is she telling the truth? <laughs> Uh, go ahead and make an insight check. It's just forbidden. <laughs> forbidden. I rolled a six. I definitely think we should listen to her. She's hard to read, but yeah, she, I mean, oh. forbidden for one, you know, probably means forbidden for another, you know. Oh. Uh, it, it, yes. I mean, I'm... But keep going i i i'm more than happy to trust your like your knowledge of the area and your 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 sense that there is something bad about this location i would just like to yeah. understand a little bit more about why that is a perfectly uh reasonable thing maybe we can talk about this as we as we move um and she keeps she keeps talking to Irina. Scared, I, I read that. or oh. am I getting like a an issue like fear for this place, or is it literally that you know bad stories can't go there? Um, so Panda, the when you've passed this in the past, um, you have seen fear even in the eyes of those yeah. such as um, such yeah. as uh, Alenka. You know, people who are tend to think of themselves rather fearless say, "No, we do not go to that place. Never." I'd say um, you probably don't. You probably see not necessarily fear, but it's almost like the. It's almost as if there was like a like. It's just impossible to go there. Like she just is just like not even considering going. Oh. She's like, "No, we're just not doing that." Please. It's like a thing that one does not do. Yeah, it's like it's allergic not... to bread. Allergic to bread? No. Flour? Why would I be allergic to bread? Flour? No. <laughs> just... Of course not. I love is, bread. Is, is that a thing? Oh, no, but I'm worried. I'm wondering why. No, there was there was a girl at the priory who couldn't eat bread. Huh. <laughs> Maybe that related, I'm not sure. Look, I, I bet I, she talked I've... about it all the time, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Irina, what would you like to do? Would you she was like also to... vegan. Would um, you like to uh, continue towards Valaki, or do you want to mm, check out the super spooky windmill? Um, Just while, though. I think... <laughs> Something about it is a little unsettling, and I don't want to put our friend out, if you see, I think. Yeah, absolutely, uh, no, and, and I completely agree. So, Claire? Mm. Yes. Should we Walter. just keep moving? It... Yes. It, it irks me to leave something a stone unturned, but I'm willing to respect the feelings of the group, and we can press on towards Falaki. Okay. If you see this image here, essentially if you're going to forward a bit and then take a hard right, the path curves before it goes up towards the windmill. You see a group of blackbirds flying around the top of it, and then they descend down somewhere behind this windmill. Mm. Your path curves northward. And now you're in a series of rolling hills. Golden ones now, as there seems to be dried fields of corn on either side of the road. 
some growing and to impressive height. Your path to either side is the vision is blocked. Um, occasionally you see a form. There's one point where there's a stick and then a cross stick, some cloth just hanging off it. Seems to be um, perhaps the remnants of a scarecrow on your left. There's another on the right too. This one though, um, there's an old decaying pumpkin with a worm just sort of sliding out of it. And on top is sitting a raven just picking at it, at this pumpkin sort of tearing bits from the top of it. Just a piece of cloth really on cross and then pumpkin, worms, decay, the raven. So you said this corn, obviously, does it look like it was, I mean, planted this harvest or is there people, you know, or has it been there for years and it's just left to grow? Um, go ahead and make a nature check. 20, 30, 20. Oh, very good. Um, so you notice that the rows have become a bit disorderly, like the seeds from previous times have dropped. Um, this does look like, some of it look, looks like it has been sown more recently, but um, right now they're mostly dry husks. You look even at the ears and you, you find what you would think to be a nice bushel of corn. You tear it apart, leaves, 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 leaves. And there's nothing inside. Okay. There's no grain. It was just like a false ear. Another one you grab out and you see it's yielding nothing. Just skeletal stalks of corn, sharp leaves, and um, barren ears. Disturbing. Okay, we keep moving. Yeah. Okay. As you come around a corner, you see a figure in front of you. Uh, fuller looking, more fresh scarecrow seems to have be actually made of some farming implements. Like there's a, um, a hoe on one side and then a garden rake for the other hand. Um, this one seems to be stuffed with hay. This and is clearly an upper class head, an, an upper class scarecrow. Yeah, more made more recently. You continue, continue on, and yeah, just a sackcloth hood. And you hear a rustling from either side of you. <laughs> Coming through. Uh, just while Joe draws his sword. I do the same. Okay. You guys glance in either direction. When you look forward, you now see the scarecrow that you first stopped at is now planted in the middle of the road. <laughs> and you see the hood and one of the oh. rakes <laughs> reaches down and breaks the stand that it is set upon which shatters and what seem to be um, two sort of makeshift straw legs form underneath it <laughs> and with a sort of barely balancing gait it starts to make its way towards you. And we will once again roll initiative. Oh, look, it looks friendly. <laughs> it just wants to talk. Marie once again with a beaming smile. <laughs> um, aha, yes, that was what I was going to ask. You guys may have to update them just because I cleared them from the last one, so... I will add you your turns, though, so you can <laughs> adjust as needed. Oh, I got the same. Oh, wow. Nice. Why do you, why, why do you I guys also got points? the same. I got a natural. I got no. I didn't. I got a natural twenty this time. What did I get last time? I don't remember. You could scroll up and find out. I'm gonna hmm. check because it didn't shut my thing last time. If you guys would be in a different um, sort of, you know, arrangement, let me know. Um, this feels fairly appropriate to me. Uh, not really. Hang on. Let me just put myself Marie there. Looking... <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> uh, no, I got, yeah. 
Yeah, I got an 18 last As a reminder, you hear rustling coming from your left and right. Oh, so good. the path is uh, in either direction is obscured. It's not a path. It's just in the corn, really. All right. Obscured by corn. So you're saying and that we you see we see scarecrows to the front and to the back, but we hear rustling to either side of us as well. That's correct. Ah. And as these appear and start lumbering their way towards you, these horrible one is, has a scythe for a hand, um, another like a big pair of clippers. They seem to be fashioned from farming tools with rusty ends um, and uh, old decayed wood. Um, but before we launch into this combat, it's a great time to take a break. Indeed. All right. All right. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes and see how um, these crows get scared. What? Well, not scared. All right. See you in 10 minutes, guys. Don't go anywhere. Hello, welcome back everyone. And welcome back as the characters here have found themselves in a bit of a situation. Wandering a narrow road between some cornfields when a number of scarecrows emerged with terrible sackcloth grins and rusted sharp farming implements as claws. Um, in fact, I just learned how to do this. I can show you a little picture. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. Looks like this. Oh, hang on. How did you do that? Um, when you bring up a, a um, monster page, you mm -hmm. can click display in VTT under their... Um, oh. oh, so you did it on D&D Beyond. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's super cool. Yes. Excellent. Well, I can click so on the link and it comes straight up for the for the people watching. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So that's what you have coming at you. Um, though, as I mentioned, these those ones seem to just have that wiry wicker hands. These have hands that were made from farming tools. So, um, oh, I need to roll their own initiative. Aha. And first up, imagine that we have Damn, you beat me. Hey, Giswaldo is very, very fast. <laughs> um, Giswaldo runs up boop, boop, and stabs this with his rapier. Okay. How about you? <laughs> I rolled a 14. A 14 will hit. Um, this will not be sneak attack damage, but it will be eight piercing. Okay. You will notice this is not particularly effective. Ah. Piercing damage. If only I had something else. Oh, well. And I go back using fancy footwork to avoid the attack okay. of opportunity. So you hop over the sort of rail there into the corn. And Elimus, you are up. Just while though you uh, can hear rustling coming from Can your, I make a perception check? It will, will it cost me... Um, I want to see if there's something at my feet. At your feet? Well, like, I mean, is there some way to determine what is coming? Um, so, um, if you will, you know there's something coming, but they will, um, they will have to beat your passive perception in order for you to be essentially surprised by them. Does that make sense? Or do you, would you like to try and spot them? Spot I would one? like to try to spot them. Okay, I will give I you a free to. one as it's, um... It'll be a bit difficult because you're not using your action to do it. I understand. Perception check. Oop. And I have rolled a 10. Okay. Um, the rustling and the, the, the corn, the way it's shifting in front of you. They can't seem to find a pattern at the moment. All right. I believe I still have movement left and my bonus action move, so I will leap back over the railing and move to protect strings. Elimus, you're up. You're muted, my friend. Oh no, he's lost his voice. We've got a mic crash here. He was uh, 
It's he he wants to cast a spell. Who it's casts one, silence? It's one word. It's two words. It's <laughs> it sounds like the uh man, the um I, I also have cords under my desk too, and I'm like super fidgety. And so I don't know if that's a thing, but I kick them. So it sounds like choir stall. What? <laughs> oh, that'd be a that'd be a terrible, terribly fun, but disrespectful activity to just um like you know, have you seen the bad lip reading videos that they have? Like <laughs> the <laughs> NFL ones are just amazing. <laughs> yep. Um, sorry about that. You can do. Hey, there he is. Yeah. Sorry, my, my mic. You know, you know these really dodgy American plugs. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've got one of them going into an adapter. But you know, it's just you know, you need, you need to change the plug system, to guys, to like you know the UK sockets. Far more safer. Um, yeah, sorry, I was just saying thank you to uh, Crips and to the Thinnest Expert for their subs. Um, Alimus will um, point his staff at the creature that just Waldo just hit and, um, yeah, and speak the words, Gelu and a, a ray of light will, a ray of freezing cold will come out to attack. Okay. For a 22 to hit, only three damage. Two for three. I'm not in roll twenty anymore. That was interesting. Mm. But twenty-two, yes, absolutely will hit. I'll apply the damage in just a moment. Just three damage and then minus ten to its movement. Good to know. I need next level, then it can start doing some proper damage. Yes. Good things happen at level five. Like seven damage. Um, so just while low, yeah, got it. This one re damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This one simply looks at you, it begins uh -oh. to grin wider, 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 and the mouth. I feel opens. a saving throw coming up, and what looks to be a dead bird just falls out of its mouth. Huh. Ah. This is a new direction. God. And I need a saving throw. You are right. Is it a raven? Does that mean he's cursed now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks cursed already. I need a wisdom save just while. Wisdom while. save coming at you. I rolled a natural one. Oh no. Ooh. Mm. Yikes. Oh, no. Um Goodbye, you everyone. Are... <laughs> you are frightened and Paralyzed. What if, he's, <laughs> what if he's already frightened? <laughs> <laughs> then he's super paralyzed. I'm paralyzed. Oh, that's not good. And all you can hear, just Waldo, is the crunch, 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 as hopping over is another scarecrow here. Ah, oh, shit. That takes what looks to be just a hammer and goes to swing at your midsection with two attacks. Oh, she, oh, she, <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Um, that's funny. I've got a, a seven at advantage on the first one, which is lovely. <laughs> and then a, um, uh, a, six, a 17, sorry, on the second one. I believe that with both advantage, uh, They both miss. So they both managed to, I suppose he froze with his buckler in a defensive position and they just go, yeah. kong, kong, pretty, off of both of them. Pretty darn remarkable. So this one also um, gets this big grin going across its face. And a couple half- eaten rats fall out of this sackcloth mouth and Claire mm -hmm. I need I you to make a wisdom coming. save yeah um have I still got a, um I have a 16 on that save okay you are fine sorry what's up Alimus have I still got inspiration from, from no the... it only lasts 10 minutes ah okay it just <laughs> hisses in your direction and then we'll close the distance and then you 
see you see and hear the other one crashing through the cornfield. Okay. This one will hop over the railing and will attack Elimus with two claws. Oh, oh, okay. Seventeen to hit on the second one. I'm I'm just going out on a limb and assuming a four misses you. So. Uh, yeah, four misses, and as he goes to strike Elimus, he will say, "It's uh, just say Clippius," and a shield will come up. And it'll just clang off the shield. Beautiful. Uh, so, so what did you hit me with? 17? 17. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, yes. Gives me, a shield gives me plus five, doesn't it? It does. Oh, yeah, that would miss him. Thank God for okay. that. Very good. Um, and the last rushing noise will come forward. And look at you, Mary, and make a wide grin. This one will just go empty mouthed, though the sackcloth will expand to an unnatural portion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you she make smiles a back. Grill. Yes, he needs to make a wisdom save as well. <laughs> oh. oh, let me see. Only if she can open her mouth. Wide enough to swallow his whole head. That's what oh, he's doing. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, a wisdom save. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a fool. You are frightened and Ouch. paralyzed. We're all fine back here. No problems. <laughs> <gasps> I hate this. I hate uh, this. Crap. I'm so afraid. Um... I am going to use Jesualto's point of inspiration to grant advantage on that saving throw. It only lasts ten minutes. No, he has. She advantage. already rolled. She already rolled twice too. So, <laughs> but oh, you would, oh. you wouldn't. Okay, all right, fine. If that, if you would say that, that would stand as no, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, but it's one of those. Uh, I believe what we've done in the past is you have to declare your rolling with inspiration, right? Or do we have? Did we do a re-roll? I can't even. I remember think you can do I've a re-roll. Yeah. Yeah. It, it depends. I mean, in my game, we use it as insp you can use a point of inspiration yeah. to re-roll any twenty-sided die roll. Sure. All right. I but will it's allow up to it you. if you would like to re-roll it, Panda. So I have a point of inspiration that I got from a previous game. I am. You hear? Uh, just one look. Go. You got this over your over the corner of his shoulder. <laughs> As he's paralyzed. I got a 12. A 12 will be enough. Yes! You are not, you are not paralyzed. I'm like stiff, and as he says, I got this, I'm like, I look back and I just smile and I stare into the scarecrow's soul. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I got You'll this. You'll have to stare a long ways. <laughs> All right, Claire, you're up. All right. Um. gonna uh okay which was the one that um no 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 the I'll, right I'll attack the one that's attacking um that's attacking a um okay. let's try to take out the threat to the squishies um i will take actually first as a bonus action i will channel divinity um using vow of enmity against the one that is in front of Alimus, um, which I uh, grants me advantage on rolls against said creature. Okay, is that an action to do so? It is a bonus action. Okay, cool. It's following which I will um, make an attack with my long sword. I'm going to reach out and slash to the side, um, and for kicks because I can. I'll cast booming blade through that. So I'll start with the weapon attack. And I just closed roll 20 by accident. That was very silly. <laughs> oh, that's a natural 20. I hit the X. You shit and the world on. Oh. <laughs> I gotta relaunch the game, shit. Is, isn't there a line in, in the Mel Brooks movie where they turn off the screen, but they turn off the movie instead? <laughs> What'd you do? All turn right. off the screen. No, you, you turned off the movie. <laughs> shit. Um... Okay, I will redo that. That was very silly. Um, okay, I think coming through. Okay, just in case that's a crit. 
It's oh, not, crit, but I got a 21. 19 will do. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, 13 uh, damage, and then I'll put the spell on there for Booming Blade. Um, so if he moves um, at all before my next turn, he takes 8 okay. thunder damage. Noted. This seems to be an effective attack. And you slice and you see a puff of dry, musty hay um, sort of erupt from the chest. It, it, it just cries. Then <laughs> focuses back on you. Suck it. All right. Good turn. Uh, M- Mary. The one next to Giswaldo. Mm hmm. I turn to, and if I recall correctly, you described them being made of farming implements such as rakes. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to cast heat metal on the rakes. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and I don't think no, you don't get a save. Uh, that's, that's one of those. Yeah, it's one of the. It just a happens. Nasty spell. So that is thirteen fire damage. And um, with my final bardic inspiration of the day, as my hand stops being like paralyzed from fright, uh, uh, a um, she lifts it up and she gives a kiss on the puppet's cheek that looks like Jeswaldo, and um, I give you inspiration. That's cute. That was adorable. Yes, I'm but smiling. It, it cries out. <laughs> and starts to burn and embers uh, begin to catch all over it. Um, this seems to be that seems to be a super effective attack. Maris, you're up. Um, uh, okay, so Maris will help out her buddy Jeswaldo. So I'm going to take some movement, go stand next to him, and cast Lesser Restoration. Ooh. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Does that remove the fear effect? Uh, it, it removes Paralyzed. Yeah, it unparalyzes him. Oh, I guess I just told you guys what I did. Let me actually... <laughs> did it roll? Yeah. Did it just show you? Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Um, um, frightened, frightened just happens that there does not seem to be a spell that counters frightened, not even calm emotions. It's just, and besides, lesser restoration can only change one condition. So the one right. would be. And da, 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 da. there are ways to counteract yeah. frightened with like uh, there's like bardic right. Interesting. Yeah, but you are still indeed you are still frightened. Um, and then as a bonus action, I will cast healing word on myself because I am down some hit points from our last skirmish. Um, healing word and lesser restoration are both leveled spells. So okay. if you cast the the lesser restoration, you are you can only do a bonus action cantrip for another spell. I, which don't oh, really. Okay. There's not really a bonus action cantrip. So. Well, then um, never mind. I hope I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Cool. So, Effective, though. Cool. Frightened, but no longer paralyzed, just Waldo. Uh, so, um, this heat metal, is the uh, scarecrow still holding it? Um, it, is. Uh, it is a part of him, it's so he can't actually. Of it. He, he cannot drop it, so that means every turn, as a bonus action, I can make him take that damage again. Hmm. <laughs> is there a way? Is there an attack that I could make that would uh, remove weapons from any of these? Um, uh, scarecrow's hands. So they are built from this farming equipment. So essentially, um, no, you couldn't. It it wouldn't be disarming. They're not holding anything. Okay, they I are understand. In, in, inherently weapons. I oh, got it. 
Um, hmm. Well, then I will just attack this fellow here. Uh, I'm assuming he does not have a discernible anatomy. Um, no. Okay. So they're immune to sneak attack. Um, discernible anatomy. So he is a construct, but um, I will say he is in the form of a person. So um, it's not a blob. Uh, a well-placed strike would be able to deal more damage. So I will allow sneak attack in this instance. Very good. Uh, where did that not go? I will try again. What does Frighten give you then? Disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is one. Uh, <laughs> natural one. I think that's going to be the winner. Yep. And the 19. So yes, the natural one with the disadvantage because he's frightened. Yes. Does that um, this one is burning and seeming very damaged, but the one that have just glared at you, you can't shake the image of yourself being not about not on by that sackcloth hood. Yeah. All right, I'm done. Okay. Elimus. Oh, Elimus will step five foot to here. Okay. Slam his staff down into the mud and speak the words Ignis Trabum. And then a, a, literally like a, a burst of fire will just go out in a line straight down and catching these two. Okay. For a deck save of 15. Nice. Um, oh, in a line. Yeah. Um, I've got a 9 and an 8 as a result. Oh, they take 13 damage each. Wow. Again, you feel this is enormously effective. And in fact, the one in front of you, um, the... You, the fire pierces directly through it and it starts to burn from within um you see a bit of embers begin to catch within the sackcloth hood it feels a second like it's beginning to glow from within in a frightening way but then it starts to twitch about and you realize that it's simply burning the whole thing catches and pretty soon it is reducing to embers at your feet the second one not quite there yet but looking very damaged great Cool. Anything else? Um, no. Uh, 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 I'll move five foot back into here. All right. This one will look towards you, Mary. Hmm. And knowing that you were the one who casted the spell that heated up his scythe. He's very mad about it. You'll make two attacks. Unfortunately, because of the heat metal spell, they are at disadvantage. Um, does a 13 hit you? It is my AC. Oh, yeah, had an 8 and a 13. Um, he will deal 6 slashing damage. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, wisdom save on it. Uh, that's that's not a save. Uh, this is the same. Say so a disadvantage with the eight miss then. Uh, eight attack. missed. It was uh, eight and a nine, and then a uh, seventeen. Oh, yeah, two and attacks, a didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a six. Unfortunately, um, the way this burning scythe slashes through you, though it probably cauterizes the wound somewhat, um, the effect and the uh, the grin that nevertheless um, is set upon you is just too frightening. And you, you are frightened. That's the frightened condition. Dang it. On D&D &D Beyond, you can click the frightened condition. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Hmm. It is very good. All right. Now, Claire, this one will look at you once again <laughs> and force you to make a wisdom save. I could do that. Uh, natural 20. 
Critically succeed. Boom, 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 boom. I'm good. so wise. <laughs> and it will look disappointed and angry. I snarl back. <laughs> Got it. Maris has strayed a bit into the corn. And so this one will come over here and make two attacks. I like how Elena said, I am wise and done the shrimp thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to let that lie. It cl- Claire's intelligence is her, her least good quality. Um, I've got a 12 and a 15 against Maris. I think both those miss, don't they? Uh, let me double check. 15 is my AC. Okay, so you will take eight points of slashing damage Great. as this farming rake uh, just hits and you feel the points of it just break through your armor in some places, piercing into your flesh. Okay, doke. Um, am I allowed to use my reaction since it's on the Scarecrow's turn, or is it too late? Uh, your reaction, as long as it triggers, you can use it. Um, I'm going to use my reaction uh, to being sliced. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, uh, cast Hellish Rebuke. Ooh. Yeah, crow, that sliced me. The That's 23 a hell of a fire roll. damage. 23 <laughs> wow. damage. 23 oh fire god. damage. Uh, oh my god. Roll the six That's, on its saving wow. throw. Um, that- so, this is not the end of combat, combat but um, so you just. The, I mean, it's, uh, you know, 23 is a high roll. You just dealt 46 damage to this Scarecrow. How would you, how does <laughs> your, how do you rebuke him and what is the effect that has on the Scarecrow? Um, I mean, I like to imagine um, she, you know, had the marionette up and then as he slashed down on her um, and she became uh, frightened, the head kind of dropped and almost as if it looked at Marie and just almost from where the slash was um just the smile on her face drops to a frown there's almost seems like flame in her eyes and just this burst of flame um just comes from this wound out and engulfs the scarecrow completely and by the time the fire is is there the it's just gone yeah the flames were its shape and by the time the flames uh emit like it's just gone yeah, so you guys see the um, uh, the flames erupt from the very body of Mary, and um, you turn away for a bit. Even the light cleric has to look away for a second, and not only the scarecrow, but a good portion of the corn beyond it has been reduced to white ash. Alimus packs his still- gear and goes home. <laughs> Don't need a wizard. Um, am I still frightened? Um, you're frightened of this one. I haven't got a spell no. that could do that damage. I'm frightened of <laughs> I'm frightened of Marie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> also, maybe that. But this one will uh, approach you and make two claw attacks. I have an 18 and a 16. Both of them miss. I deflect Ooh. them with my buckler. Indeed. <laughs> Disappointing. Anyway, um, Claire, you are up. All right. Um, having just, uh, snarled viciously at the one in front of me, I'm gonna, uh, take a nice long slice across its midsection with my sword. Um, it's a 13 hit. Um, yes, it will. All right, uh, then that'll be 11 damage. All right. This one you cut across its midsection and you hit the vertical pole that's sort of serving as a makeshift spinal column and you hear it snap and it folds in half and just falls limp onto the ground in a puff of hay and rot. I spit on its body. Good. (laughs) Very good. The petty petty paladin. (laughs) (laughs) Pettyden. Anything else? Um, I guess I will... I'm gonna step over here and just position myself 
in front of the the wizard and the the bard. Cool. Mary. By the way, uh, well, it doesn't really matter now. That's uh, you know the target of your heat metal. Yeah, concentration doesn't really matter anymore. So, I just, but <laughs> it's based on what I, you did, I am curious to know if the metal is still being heated by the spell because it would be very effective for just Walter to use as a weapon. Interesting. Um, go ahead and make a cons uh, a Constitution saving throw for concentration. Constitution save. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. On save. I'm not good at these. Nope. Ah! Uh, three. Unfortunately, <laughs> you, when you were hit by that scarecrow, the um, uh, the the spell you were on, the the focus you were maintaining to create that heat, uh, you, you forgot about it in your rebuke. All of your energy went towards that fire, and so the uh, other fire you were generating is no longer in effect. Unfortunate. Um. It's all right, so, he probably would have burned as well, though. <laughs> uh, the other two scarecrows, how good they're looking? Um, they look pretty much undamaged. Okay, I'm going to uh, cast Heat Metal again, but on a, an, another one. Um, <laughs> okay. Because it seems to work really well. Um, for another 13, oh no, sorry, <laughs> 11 fire damage. All right, it seems super effective. Which one are you targeting? Ah, this one. The one at the top. The scythe erupts in flame, and the flame travels down the stick and begins to ignite the hay beneath it. Black I still can't believe there's no to from. hit or save or anything like that for heat metal. No, because it just heats them. It no, just I heats can the get it. Metal. That's incredibly powerful and effective. Mm -hmm. It's one of those it's spells that's thing. just good. It also can make you drop a weapon or have to take off armor if that's something. But because he's made of it, he can't. Right. So it just keeps going. Amazing. Cool. And that will be the end of my turn. Next up is Maris. Yes. Uh, Maris is becoming worried about how she's feeling. She's feeling a little worse for wear. So she is going to cast cure wounds on herself so she doesn't fall during this battle. So eight. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. <laughs> um, just while though, at the end of your last turn, you could have made the saving throw. I forgot. So you can make saving throw for frightened. Yes, we did not. This is we wisdom. did not miss two rounds. We just I, I forgot to ask you at the end of your last turn. So, yeah. Uh, wait, it didn't go. Do I need to make a frightened save? Not anymore. No. Ah, nice. There you go. Twelve. You are able to shake yourself out of it. Ha! I will attack the sacro that has been heat metaled. Okay. With a 22, mm. doing 18 points of damage. Cool. Again, your mundane blade does not seem super effective against it. And then though, I will uh, move to behind him. Okay. <clears throat> Elimus. Uh, Elimus will aim his staff at the one next to Maurice and fire off a ray of frost. Attempt to for 11 to miss. 11 will hit. Oh, will he? Only one damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feels wizard cantrip, man. Um, yeah. And yeah, so you will freeze a bit of it, but it will kind of turn its head to you. <laughs> <laughs> laugh in your direction in your general direction <laughs> <laughs> and now it's a D, &D game <laughs> we've already had two references so. <laughs> all right Jaswaldo. a pair of claws or really a flaming scythe i guess coming in your direction Yeet. um 
I have an 11 and a 19. The 19 hits for five points of slashing damage. Hey. And I wonder. Let me look at. Let me read this heat metal skull. Would there be any sort of effect? Want me to send it out? There we go. Hmm. Any creature in physical contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage. When you cast it. Yeah. And uh, if the creature's holding or wearing, disadvantage. Um, nope. I, I. You would be able to cast it on your own weapon, I think, if it was going to be able to do damage. Yeah, but then yeah. you'd burn yourself. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it applies. I don't. I don't see a r rule reason to apply it to um, you, Jeswaldo. So, but you do need to make a wisdom saving throw again. All right. Well, there's the five damage and the wisdom saving throw. Fourteen. You are fine. Aha! Yes. A couple more attacks coming your way with a big rake. Awesome. Um, I have a fourteen and a fifteen to hit. Okay, so the 15 hits, the 14 misses. All right, five slashing damage. And I need another wisdom saving throw. Okie doke. Okay. You're a cleric. You're good at these. Yeah, I am. I'm pretty good at them. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. I jinxed it. Ooh, Maris, you nine. are frightened. No! no. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> oh, but you are. Claire, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'll just make another attack against this one here in front of Maris. I'm distressed by how frightened she is. So, um. Longsword, 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 lunging out towards it with a 20 total for yes. uh, 10 slashing damage. Nice. This seems very effective as your sword cuts through it. Another puff of stuffing comes out <laughs> along with a, what looks to be the, um, the uh, sort of rearranged corpses of a couple dead birds stuffed mm. in its stomach. First they took part of my legs, they threw them over there. Then they took part of my other legs and threw it over there. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, I th think that will be all for my turn. I will stay put. Okay. All right. Um, Mary. May I use a bonus action before my action? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Uh so I use my bonus action to redo the um, to the heat metal again for twelve damage. Sure. Just Waldo, you will see the one before in front of you. The scythe on its arm will glow hotter red, and Ooh. the rest of the body will just erupt in flame, collapse, and you will see on the other side of it, Mary. I give her a there. salute with the rapier. And as he does that, I then pull out my own rapier <laughs> and I head over here and I take a, a stab at the uh, at this one for 15 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Uh, four piercing damage. All right. Um, though it doesn't seem super effective. Your rapier just, you, you thrust it in and it doesn't seem to have done the damage you would expect. Heard it, but not a lot. About half, you'd say. <laughs> oh. On a scale right. from 1 to 32, how hurt does he look? <laughs> um, thank you. You you just lied. You, you really read the stat block, and you were like, I'm just going to not say the actual total so he doesn't think I'm cheating. Uh, he looks about... <laughs> does he scale. actually have 32? It's close. Oh. Um, uh he has about uh, medium high hit points. <laughs> medium high. <laughs> but after right. I hit him with There's a one. There's no meta at this table. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, table? Oh, 
<laughs> what meta? Maris, you're up. Okay, Maris will cast Scorching Ray. Um, and okay. you'll so, be disadvantaged yeah, since you are frightened. Move five foot back for first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It sure, would. Sure, 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 it sure, can sure. attack it. So either I'll, I'll tell you this from a rules perspective. Either way, yeah. it's going to be a disadvantage because you are frightened of the target. Right. And uh, so even if you took a step back, it would still be a disadvantage. And if you step back, he will attack you. Probably. I mean, he might not, but right. He could if he wanted to. Right. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, not having that much a choice. <laughs> Because, hey, like, whatever I do is with disadvantage anyway, and I'm hoping that he'll just catch on fire. Um, so, let's see. So that was the first one. Oh! It's going to do it. Yeah, Yay! that's a really good disadvantage roll there. Nice. nice. <laughs> and that five feels like way more than five points of damage. Uh, it begins to erupt in fire and howl in pain. It almost feels like you did ten points of damage. Mm. Oh. Still got two more rays. <laughs> That's right. That's true. So, I just roll again at disadvantage? Yep. Mm -hmm. it, indeed. Great. Okay. Um... Oh, mm. unfortunately, <laughs> the second one will go just wide. Okay, and I'll do one more. Just wide, though. Just wide, though. <laughs> that one? That's one. very nice. Yeah! In the distance, you hear... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> the windmill's on fire. <laughs> we don't have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have to go down to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> nah. We're, we're, it we burning, proved it before. It, we're, a, we're a good fire brigade. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. We don't go there. We let it burn. We'll let it burn. <laughs> and then I will search the ashes. <laughs> yes. All right. It is hanging on by a thread. All right. Literally. <laughs> Just Waldo, you're up. Just Waldo leaps over the fence to cut that thread. We hope. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> well, that was a dart, but it seventeen still hits. I'm gonna just keep that. Is that all right? Your Does melee it... range dart. You <laughs> <melee range dart. laughs> still got disadvantage. Do I? Uh, he's not. His oh, the source of his fear died. Oh, so nice. I'm gonna roll the damage for a rapier, um, if you don't mind. Just because. There we go. Much better. So that's 18 points of piercing damage. Okay. Um, how do you cut the last thread? Uh, very surgically. I come and I'm going to like do a standard like into the body thrust as I would to a normal living creature. And then I stop for a second and I take a moment to observe. And I go, oh, I can cut this string here and this here and, and here. And he just falls into four pieces. Mm -hmm. It's like the cartoon would do. Yes. They leave him yet. Exactly. Yes, like just that. Waldo feels most at home when he is a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was. So it is. Ooh. That show it shall be. Windmill with Mari's head sticking out over the top. <laughs> so about that windmill. Yeah. No, he won't. It is forbidden. It's forbidden, and she just sheaths back her rapier <laughs> into her, her bustle dress and just turns to leave. Ah, strings. <laughs> Most impressive. I'm very glad you came along. Thank you. Um, she does like a curtsy again. Um, she's like, I'll, I'll need to get better with the blade, though. I'm not quite on your standard. Ah, well, few people are. <laughs> That was in character. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh, I clean it's off. It's true, you know. Where do you think I got all these names? 
Your mother? No. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's very funny, but no. <laughs> All right. Um, I presume there's nothing of value on these bodies, these these scarecrow. Entity. Got some nice ash if you if it's a spell component if if you need ash or anything. Oh, I uh, actually might. <laughs> Check out the ash on that scarecrow, really? <laughs> does does any of them have a poem? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just going to take a moment to sort of poke around, oh um, see if there's anything. This gets notable. worse. No. No. Nothing but ash. Mm -hmm. I'm, no roll needed. Um, they are burning apart. There are some bits of iron detached from the former tools and an opalescent fog that starts to roll in, but no pearl. Delightful. Uh, how's Arena doing? She's okay. Um, she's standing there rapier drawn again and uh, nodding, thinking she's going to join in in the next combat. Um, <laughs> it works Arena. better when you stick it in something. That's what she said. Um, she raises an eyebrow in your direction. Reina, do you still have that uh, sewing kit that she mentioned before? Oh, yes, of course. I uh, I took a, a slash from one of those. Um, I was wondering if maybe when we when things calm down, if you could repair it while I'm wearing the dress. I don't want the sizing to go off. Um, sure. I mean, we could go. We could, you know go behind a tree or something or set up our own tent. How about a tent? We could go in there and if you I want mean, it's not to take really it the off. Time. Okay, sure. That's fine. Yes. Um, just Could always buy a new dress. No, I'm quite fond of this one. Um, sure. If, if I can determine that the threat has been successfully uh, dealt with, I think we should probably mm. press on I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Onwards towards the windmill. No. Uh... no. <laughs> uh, away from the windmill. Away from the windmill. I've heard mm -hmm. that little brothers can be little shits sometimes. Oh, very, very much so. I've known him since he was two years old. I can confirm Now that we this. have in... Now that we have fought two battles together, don't you think you can tell us exactly why we can't go in the windmill? I mean, we're not going to the windmill. Look, we're walking away. We're not going in. But... Do I believe him? <laughs> Do I believe that we're not going to the windmill? We're definitively not going to the windmill. <laughs> yeah. As you say this, a bit of breeze picks up and you can hear... Uh, the windmill begins to turn a bit and you can hear a grinding noise from within. Mm. Murray picks up the pace. Uh, uh, yeah. So curious. Let's, um, let's go. Um, I, I will happily answer any questions you may have for me, but I don't know how much information, how worth my information is. Yeah. And on the breeze, as she's speaking these words, something smells faintly delicious. As the day begins to wane, from the direction of the windmill. Indeed, something mm, that's nice. Baked goods, maybe. Mm. Smells like bullshit. Not nice. Wait, baked goods? Oh, yeah, maybe that. Wait, are they? Go maybe ahead and make wish. perception the checks same... if you want okay, to. Okay, because I'm curious if yeah, it's the same, the same baked goods. Yeah, I was like, Dang is it, it our favorite baked goods? <laughs> I was really hoping for my perception was, check. Is this, really is this a similar I'm... smell wafting on the air? Um, I was really, 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 really hoping I had prestidigitation to just make a really bad smell. <laughs> make it go away. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't. Um, I don't have anything like that. That's annoying. So eighteen. Um, yeah. Mm, pies. Okay. Baked pies, meat pies, I think. Yeah. Savory okay. pies. Didn't didn't you guys buy some pies from that lady? I I smelled it when I came downstairs and she was there. You yeah. see a frog, a little frog, hop onto your shoulder, 
and nod enthusiastically. <laughs> I dissected one, so... You dissected a, a, a pie, pie, not the frog. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I've been looking at the frog to di dissect that, but... Well, there's the old woman who comes by into town selling those. Oftentimes at night, too. It's rather strange, but... Yeah. I didn't think it was... Do you think that's where she makes them? I'm getting Sweeney Todd vibes. I'm sorry. I actually yeah. thought it was Tab. human meat or corpse meat. Excuse me, <laughs> what? Mm. When I took it apart and examined it, something was not right with it. It wasn't like normal meat. Yes, well, if it's from that windmill, it probably wasn't normal meat. So let's get going. Oh, Don't worry. I'm glad I did not eat a pie. Don't worry, Sir Eve. You should be fine. <laughs> She's probably got through hell. Yeah. So, sorry, Vate one. Who else? Did anyone else eat one? No, uh, he was the only one. Oh, think... we gave one to the priest. You, you, stu you gave one. Yeah, you, 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 you force-fed one to the priest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Try the priest. Essie had a couple. Essie bought a couple and saved them, and I'm not sure if she actually ate one or not. No, she didn't eat them. No. Okay. Okay. She bought them purely to use against others. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> others <Yeah>. like me. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, so you did can... you have one? No, she didn't. No, she wanted to drug me. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I, I can't sleep on her in the end. Right, right. Yeah, okay. Which ultimately I preferred, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, windmill? No. No windmill. Well, no, hang on, hang on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, actually, if we have reason to believe that these pies are being made of people then I'm really not okay with that. I couldn't confirm. The meat was quite tender and human meat isn't. But what, there was no, something was, not excuse right. Excuse me? <laughs> I've, I've done studies before. You know? I, I'm, a, I'm a wizard. Is, is, is that something that wizards study? Well, we study the undead. We study many things. Necromancy you is You study that... cooked human meat? Oh, no, but... <laughs> Marie, who I think is probably trailing ahead, you just see her turn around and the same almost like looks like flame in her eyes for a second as she uses thaumaturgy to just say it's forbidden. <laughs> oh, all right, it's forbidden. <laughs> okay, time to go. Maybe we have to come back this way, though. All right, I'm putting it out there on the record that I am not okay with the idea that humans might be being baked into pies, but if we can go. I agree. I also agree. Humans should not be baked into pies. However, <laughs> that's probably not the case. D and D everyone. Do I feel that she's, <laughs> she's spellbound by any chance DM? Uh, go ahead and make an insight check there. Oh, great. My, my highest score 18. Um, actually, no. Um, it, from what you can tell, it is pure fear. Fear, but also <laughs> tradition and just... Tradition! Um, I, I would say, tradition. you grew, you grew <laughs> up with Marie, you know that if tradition. someone... Uh, not to, like, <laughs> you know if someone gave her a rule or told her not to do something or to do something, she would follow that. Yes. Like, you know she follows rules. Now Maris knows that Claire does not like to follow rules. <laughs> Maris does know that. And Maris likes to make people like not fight. <laughs> so she just got <laughs> She's like Ooh. I'm like I'm like standing there like tugging at the side of your like room. I'm like, Maris, I wanna go check it out. I am I am going to stay out of this, I think. Uh, Elimus, me too. What do you think? I'm going to stand over by Elimus. <laughs> Forbidden. Let's go. Forbidden. It is forbidden. No one tells me something's forbidden. I mutter a little bit and then just tramp down the road after Mari. Oh, I agree. I would like to look just to prove my theories. Can we Why did we sort of think that those theories are proven and leave it at that? But You're, it, very, it... you're very smart. <laughs> It's not just a theory issue, Jeswaldo. <laughs> like, okay, yes, you might, you, Alimus, might be happy 
it to know that your theory of hmm this this cooked meat might perhaps be human it's a terribly like suspicion i dm just a real quick question along this whole trek and this whole travel and we're in fields have we seen any livestock out of curiosity any at all that's a good question nope none doesn't help my point (laughs) no kidding (laughs) yeah so you know this is an interesting thing. I have not seen any livestock since we <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this all in the pies. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw. I'm pretty sure I saw something. Uh, some livestock. So I saw some dead birds. Yeah, we saw some birds. Yeah, maybe they're bird pies. Alimus, tell us from your great knowledge of meat texture. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it bird meat? Definitely in these not. Pies? Welcome to Elias's show, Rate My Meat. From what I remember, the DM said it was more like like beef, but not beef. No, uh, was it lamb, but not lamb, wasn't it? Um, it was more like that sort of texture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's my meat texture? <laughs> My point (laughs) was Alimus might be happy with having a theory proven. I, however, (laughs) would take that theory issue a step further and say it might require action. Ah, ah, ah. I think I think I have a way to make a compromise. (laughs) Okay. This, This has been a harrowing day. We have had spiders. We have had the grave robbing we have had a scary man on a horse and we have fought scarecrows maybe this is not the best time to go into a forbidden place to confront someone who makes magical human meat pies (laughs) perhaps we could do this some other time i mean that's fine let's just like keep a pin in it yeah i would second the motion of maybe taking a beat and then coming back even though it's forbidden maybe it will be less forbidden next maybe time. it'll be less forbidden with time <laughs> I, I tell you what I, I have an idea if we don't talk about the windmill anymore when we get to Valaki you may ask the Vistani themselves why we don't go to the windmill because they probably have the answer that I do not <laughs> And then maybe, sorry. And then maybe, you will also know not to go to the windmill, and we can just continue on our day. How far are we from Velaki? Um, (laughs) it's judging. You you can talk with both um, Mary and Irina, and you will think it's probably a a couple more hours. You're about mid afternoon now. Okay. Fort I Bader. sure. We can go to Velaki. So you continue on. Claire runs it sounds in like the direction. <laughs> no. no. No, no, I'm I'm going with I'm I'm following close behind Mari. I'm trying to respect the thing and I just want the group to know that I have some reservations about it. Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your path continues along the woods for a while before ducking once again in them. Continue with trees on either side for a while. Eventually the path opens up into a valley. And... Oh, sorry. Look at all the crows. <laughs> and there is a valley here that is watched over by dark brooding mountains to the north and south the woods recede revealing a solid mountain berg surrounded by a wooden palisade thick fog presses up against this wall as though looking for a way inside hoping to catch the town a slumber the dirt road ends at a set of sturdy iron gates with a pair of shadowy figures standing behind them Planted in the ground and flanking the road outside the gates are a half dozen pikes with wolves' heads impaled upon them. 
looks cozy. Uh, we approach the gate. Are we allowed here? This is there, there, there are guards at, right out the front or above? Behind the gates. Behind the gates. Um, well, we'll walk up and say... Um, By this time, it's getting a little late and you can see them clutch their spears as figures approach from the outside. Can I, I yell out to them? Um, I... Hail, friends, mean me no harm, just looking to come inside. Uh, who are you? Uh, travelers what? from Barovia. Barovia? What are you doing? In, what do you need to do in Valaki? Uh, we're escorting uh, a friend, daughter of the Burgermeister, um, t- from Barovia to Valaki. Well, it's pretty late right now, aren't it? Claire, maybe, maybe we should keep that a secret if someone is looking for her. Oh, okay. would, would they know? Would I have known these people? Would I have met these people before? If they're um, Vistani? They're, these are not Vistani. These are town guards. Oh, my bad. What are you whispering about out there? Huh? Uh, ju- I, just conferring. I have a cold. <coughs> um... Would it be all right if we could come inside? It's quite cold out here, I assume. (laughs) They kind of, you hear them talking to each other. Make a persuasion check. Okay. And may I add, that was not a very inspired one. That was horrid. I rolled a two. Out here. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I, I have a seven on that. Claire, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, gentlemen. Um, oh, no. I am Jesualdo Tocarembo La Tomel Ruego Santa Maria Lima Zacatega de Jodere Santa Cruz de la Rosa. And I take off my. I have to do a very flourishing bow. Um, we would like very much to come inside, um, but we understand that being on watch all day long can be a very tiring job that uh, doesn't often uh, get rewarded as it should. Perhaps oh, we could make a contribution to hmm, ease your conscience about letting us in, though it is late. Um, what? <laughs> I... Hey, that that one talks like that. Rick Davio fellow back at the back at the uh, the end on the docks. Funny. Just let us uh, in, yes. you damn fool. Yeah, what? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you from, friend? Uh, well, I am from Barovia. Make a deception check. What did you say, Jade? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Just let us in, you damn fool. We want to get some food and a bed for the night. Oh, uh, well, I'm a performer. I could maybe put on a show in return for letting us in. Sixteen. I tried. I try and say over a line. <laughs> got it. And a persuasion check for Panda. And let's see how this oh, does. God. Can I assist? Up for my failures. Not with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay. They yes. seem to be softening with the deception. And... We're an eighteen. Oh, that's very nice. Um, oh. They kind of nod to each other, and they uh, the one says. Well, uh, yeah, that seems to, uh, that would that actually be, check out. That would actually be, uh, a 20, a day 20 with my performance, oh. uh, my persuasion. I have rolled performance by accident. <laughs> oh, cool. Very good. Um, uh, well, they will, uh, okay, that's fine then. Um, yeah, we'll let you in. If you're half as good as that Rick Tavio fellow, it'll be a good night at the Blue Otter coming up soon. So, yeah, here you go. And they'll... They'll pull open the gate. Um, uh, there I... is a sort of simple wooden one um, set be- set between these fifteen foot wooden palisades that seem to surround the town. Sorry, uh, as we're passing through, I, I'm just gonna uh, say to one of the guards, "Sorry, did you did you mention a a place here, a blue blue water or something?" Yeah, uh, the Blue Water Inn um, oh. is near the center of town. Um, yeah, it's kind of the only one we got. They got right. some beds, they got good food, they got, uh, well, should have some wine left. 
told, but you know. There's no idiots in there, is there? We're trying to avoid idiots. <laughs> well, you might want to keep on going. There's, uh, well, uh, no, all will be well, I'm sure. And the the guard next to him kind of, oh yeah, um, Vlaki's the best. All will be well. Yeah, all will be well. Um, and as just one goes by, he reaches into his um, pouch and pulls out two gold pieces, and he says, I thank you very much, gentlemen. And um, if you could forget that you saw us, there'll be another one of these when we leave. <clears throat> ah, they kind of look around me there. They take it. Um. <laughs> right. Um, glad I could... Help fix your wagon. Yes. Er, excellent. <laughs> Thank you <Yeah>. very much. <laughs> um, j just as a point of curiosity, um, I would like to attempt, I'm not very good at this, but I would like to attempt anyway, um, an insight check on after they said this rather forceful, um, all, will like, well. all, is well, all will be well. That gave me like a there is no war in Boston I, vibe. I, um, yeah. <laughs> but great, I rolled an eight, so reference. I probably had no idea. Is it, is it possible for me to help on that? Because I also wanted to. You can make your own that. role. Insight is, even... is hard to do that, but as you guys move past, um, you would be able to make the help action just be like, "Did you see that? What do you think that was? That that sounded like weird." Yeah. So <laughs> as long as it's not as part of an ongoing conversation, you can do that. Yes. The Emperor has invited you to Lake Laogai. <laughs> As someone walking uh, past the guard. Oh, you did lovely on that. As I walk past the guard, I place my hand upon his arm. Tell me we're not to be harmed tonight, are we? And I use my fascinating gaze. Fascinating gaze. Gallant. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, pull up... Um... Hypnotic gaze, sorry. Stat sheet, uh, DC 15, sure. we'll say. Okay. Mm. Did they say the town name by chance? Mm. Um, he fails, so. He kind of looks, stares at your eyes. What? 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 What did you mean everything will be fine? All will be well. It's. And you meant that Virgo sincerely, says. right? Hey, what did he say? I'm sorry. It's what the. That's what the Burgomaster says. Okay. And you were sincere? Uh, do. So, under the effect of this, do they have to answer you? What is the effect they're under? Uh, the charmed creature's speed drops to zero. The creature is incapacitated and visibly dazed. Okay. So he's... You've mostly just gotten him, like, into a... He's, he's uh... charmed. He's, he is charmed by me. It says that he is charmed yeah. by me. I take it I don't believe him with my 21 insight of that all will be well. So... And with your insight coupled with this, um, the brief uh, charm you're able to uh, effect upon him, it's more of a mantra that they say. That's kind of a, oh. a thing they say without really meaning it. And But when they say it, the others answer it like, oh, nope, definitely. Yep. Yep, all will be well. There's a bit of fear behind it as well, which is a strange coupling with that particular So it's phrase. like, all will be well. Or else, a little bit behind something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Sounds kind of like a cult thing. Like, well, we'll be well. And we'll the other well. guard approaches as you're talking. Says, hey, what? What are you doing? Dude? Why are you looking at him like that? I'm just asking him questions. Linus. And we're all done with those questions. So <laughs> yeah, good night, yeah. everyone. Let's, let's head along. Hey, brav, are you okay? I release it. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> what was I saying? 
You said all oh, will be well. well. Right, yep. All will be well. Yep, you got it. <laughs> you got, yeah, yeah, all will be well. Mm. We better be. I like to think it's the group as we walk through, we're just like, mm, we'll be well. Yeah, we'll be well. <laughs> no, we'll be well. Oh, don't you start. <laughs> I am Judy. Oh, no, stop. <laughs> I carry on walking with the others. Uh, um, so we're going to find the blue otter or blue the, water the in. Blue water in. <laughs> um, I, I like the blue otter in. Do they have otters in Barovia? Because if they species? don't, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> I, I'm deciding to leave for Let right me out weekend. of these mists. <laughs> there are no otters here. Sorry, it if I die in Barovia, you'll never see an otter again. No! Oh. Um, oh, Liz! <laughs> 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 <They're so sad. laughs> never crack um, a shell upon your chest. Um, this is the worst so. timeline. Yeah, no darkest timeline. What if Sarive can turn into one? <gasps> Has Sarive seen one? <laughs> we'll definitely have to ask him we'll if that's something him. he knows how to turn into, because I would love to see that. We just, just want to see them hold hands. That's all I want. I, that's all I want. I don't think he can turn into two. We like, need to can find one druid. and then do like a little. <laughs> we need another druid, hold. and they both need to be otters, and they both need to hold hands. <laughs> The laser focus of a successful Curse of Strahd party right here. Um, <laughs> oh, this, this is walking so, conversation. We're walking to the yeah. end. All right. Talk is that is honors. that what you're doing? All right. Well, I, yeah, a, yeah. a couple things you see on your way. Right. Um, there is a large, what looks to be like a large stockyard where a number of large wagons, sort of warehouse type uh, buildings are set and... Um, Parked at one end of the stockyard is a big carnival wagon with colorful paint that's starting to fade off. Um, and the lettering on the side spells out the words Rictavio's Carnival of Wonders. And there's a heavy padlock on the back door. I walk up Just to Kaya. Mm. I place my hand on her arm. I say, do we have funds? Um, so we have things that I suspect are valuable but we have not converted them into cash. Um, so we'll probably need to do so in short order. Although it's getting late. Are shops open at this point? Taking a look around. Um, hard, to, hard to tell at the moment, but um, there's a soft light coming from within the sort of main building, but it could be a residence as well from at least the stockyard. The houses themselves, the village has started to go to sleep, but... Um, Okay. A few people are walking the streets. It is not the same fearful town that Barovia was. A few more people are, you know, out and open in the dark. You see patrols of guards. Um, this city seems to be more in, in much okay. better shape. Um, so. Let me let me actually amend my statement. We do have in party funds 11 gold pieces and 60 silver. Everything else is itemized. Uh, that is a paltry sum. Um, I would be happy to buy the rooms for wherever we stay tonight. I do not have funds, but if we can find a pearl of worth, I could examine that item. Have I ever been could paid also be something for that a one performance could... at a tavern before? Uh, yeah, you know the Blue Water Inn would be the only tavern here, but it's a nice one. Um, so I could I could potentially make money at that tavern before me. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, worst case, I can try and get some coins together for a performance. Uh, Jeswaldo, do you know uh, that she gestures to the, the caravan with the writing on it? Do you know this person? They said you two sound alike. I don't uh, know whether you... Well, it is possible. Um, I came here from Am under strange circumstances. I suppose it is possible that there is other people here from Am under equally strange circumstances. But um, no, I do not believe I know this person. It is not a common name where I'm from. Do we see any anything else of note on our way to the Blue Water Inn? Yes, you see um, what looks to be a building with boarded windows and a uh, sign in the shape of simply a black coffin hanging outside of it. Outside are a number of piles of... Uh, wooden planks and such. You think it's probably 
actually a coffin maker's. Um, you also see a um, a cramped little shop with a um, little portico. On top of that is a wooden sign shaped like a rocking horse with a B engraved on both sides. Um, on the <clears throat> each side of the entrance are two lead framed windows and through this dirty glass, you see a bunch of displayed toys and hanging placards that have the sign. Is no fun, is no blinsky. <laughs> so it looks to be a toy shop. Are there marionettes or puppets? Right. <laughs> I know where Mari wants to go, or strings. There rather. certainly are, yes. <laughs> we, we, we can um, go in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she kind of like does the thing where she puts her hands against the window, like nose pressed against it. Like, oh. um, now you know how I felt about the windmill, and I'm just gonna just gently drag her away. <laughs> um, as we move about the town for the next couple of days, um, I would like to be on the lookout for anybody who looks affluent enough to have pearl jewelry on their person or in their home. Okay. Mm. Or in a shop. Mm, harder in a shop. <laughs> so you will see, um, you will pass, you will find the Blue Water Inn, which is um, a large two-story wooden building with a nice stone foundation. The tile roof is slagging, s slag, sagging just a bit, and there are a number of ravens perched on top of it. There's a wooden painted sign hanging above the main entrance with a blue waterfall depicted upon it. It is a nice looking inn. It is fairly large and like I said, at least two stories. Uh, to the south of the town square, then you see a large manor home of three stories at least. There, it's just three stories. It's narrow, but tall, stately looking. Oh, that's a um, bingo. Easy to see. And as you look in that direction, <laughs> the very top floor, you see just a what looks to be a flash of purple. Well, what do you think, Arina? Spills into the night for a moment and then stops. Um, I think the inn is probably a good idea for today. Tonight, at least, don't you think? Yeah, we can definitely investigate um, good options for you come the morning. Sure. Yeah, but um, as you guys, was. are you guys outside the inn at this point, do you think? Yeah. Okay. As you are there, you notice that there's a sort of a sign board posted outside the inn with um, a number of uh, notices uh, pinned upon them. They all look the same, though. They're all pretty looking very similar. And approaching one, you see, let's see, where is this? Just warning you, it's like a missing cat poster being posted again and again. We are sidetracking every mission to find this cat. Ah, so, <laughs> uh, side quest. I've had side to quest. run a, run that before <laughs> in the game. Mm. As you they guys are four hours looking for a cat, <laughs> have been going through town. You've noticed some people too who have been just sort of rushing around picking up what looks like dead wood or sticks and twigs mm -hmm. outside. All the a lot of the um, homes are. Uh, pots of wilted flowers. Um, you notice some people coming and going around you, picking up dead twigs, and then um, there is a large, again, posting uh, in front of you that says, Come one, come all, to the greatest celebration of the year, the Wolf's Head Jamboree. Attendance and children required. Pikes will be provided. All will be well. Signed, The Baron. Wait, children required? Is that what it Attendance says? Attendance required. Oh, I heard okay. children I too. I was like, that's yeah. a strange requirement. <laughs> no, attendance and children required. So children and are required. Children. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, weird. Yeah, I don't like that. We need to bring a child. <laughs> it's sort of, it looks to be an old piece of paper. And as you're sort of reading it, discussing it, um, you see two guards um, approach and one. Uh, is looking kind of shrugging and you hear a booming voice coming from behind from a nearly seven foot tall man that says you missed one you fucking idiots 
put up the new sign right now before I flog one of you. And they go, oh, yeah. And they tear the sign down and put up a new paper. We, we got them all, Isaac. I think I think that's the last one. I just, this one, you know, was sagging what? I don't want any excuses. All right. Now get your asses home and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, all will be well. All will be well, he says under his breath. Did I hear correctly them refer to this man as Isak? Isak, yeah. Isak. Okay, thank you. He kind of turns to you guys for a moment and says, What are you all just standing around for? Just looking at this lovely poster board. Yeah, we'll read it well. It's in three days. Oh. Do what it says, right? Yeah, sure. Right. I'm watching you. You're not from here, are you? No, he came in from Barovia just now. <sighs> right. Watch yourselves. All will be well, eh? All will be well. Mm. And he mm. sort of turns and lumbers away. Just a beastly, like, he's barrel-chested and, uh, like I said, almost seven feet tall. Yes. This place is for uh, idiots. So they put up a new sign. It does. Correct? It says, come one, come all, to the greatest celebration of the year, the Festival of the Blazing Sun. Attendance and children required. Rain or shine. All will be well. Signed, the Baron. Okay. And that was in three days. Again, I thought he said in 3D. It was like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow! No otters, but 3D? <laughs> Shit. Here's the... Right. Uh, new proclamation need to get these and ears checked i guess just a no i need i i, I just name? you know What's i just kind of yolo it with my accents and voices. <laughs> it's fine um What's the name of the guy on the caravan the rick tavio rick tavio rick tavio okay yeah. thank you and you can hear inside this in a bit of laughter coming. It's the first time you've heard natural laughter in quite some time. Not nervous laughter, not frightened laughter. It sounds like laughter. There's warmth pouring out. There is the smell of food, and you can hear a voice with a very lilting accent. And that is not uh, even the half of it. Uh, oh, come and listen to Rictavio. Eh? The next part of the story begins soon. Come and talk to me. <laughs> hey, someone buy me a drink, too. Uh, come on, let's uh, have this. Come on, gather around. Uh, we talk about it. Hey, come on. I can tell it's your cousin. This, I can tell already this guy is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, I think we should head inside and meet your relative, Jeswalder. I agree. He hmm. sounds quite charming. No, I, I, I don't think you could tell that just from listening to that voice. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. He sounds fun. I think we should go. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna stride through the door. You can. Like uh, the first thing you see is you like... enter. Sorry. Go ahead. So I like to think like all three of the girls are like, yeah, let's go in. Like, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing you see is a um, middle-aged but handsome, well-dressed uh, half-elf bard um, who says, hey, we've got uh, some other people here. Uh, this is even better. Uh, I bet you haven't even heard one of my stories before. Uh, okay, everyone gather around. Uh, Rictavio's, Rictavio's to tell a story. Does your story have a marionette? Because those are the only stories that I like. You are a very strange. Ah. <laughs> you are very uh... bold to say such a thing to a man wearing a sword as impressive as this. Oh, oh. Right. I can't wait to hear your story. Marine, uh, Marine. I like Marine. the women you travel with better than you. <laughs> well. I'm guessing they're not the first time you hear this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everyone have a seat. I, I, uh, hey, grab some wine. Hey, it's a, mm. <laughs> uh, and uh, when when just and, uh, give it a peacock for some space. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when just it's a meta joke. To, anyway, so. 
she, I'm going uh, to she, kill this man. She uh, uh, gives uh, the first genuine smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like... All right. <laughs> Very uh, good. I, I would love to. Uh... Oh shoot! What's it? Acknowledge the. No, no, I, I acknowledge the, the bard and then I uh, make my way towards a, a possible bar <laughs> as opposed to the bard and perhaps find a proprietor of this you, lovely establishment. You will be able to do so. Um, everyone is now in the comfort of this inn. Um, uh, let's see. what We are heading on a little bit... Uh, past 10 though uh, i know we got started wow. a little bit late but um i think you guys have arrived safely in this inn we can pick up with the role play there's lots of interesting characters yeah. around here um i don't want to just start one and then slight the next yeah. so um being drawn in by this half elf bar rictavio you make your way in to Look some comfort at, so at last <laughs> don't be jealous just Waldo. no no i'm just observing i'm not being jealous at all Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> so and, uh, yeah, that's where we'll end it for tonight. All so. right. <clears throat> well, thanks everyone who uh, came and tuned in and hung out in the chat. We had a fun, active chat tonight, so that was yeah. awesome to see. Um, we love to see that. And we love it if you just hang around and lurk, too. So yeah. you know, we're going to be back next Friday, and yeah. we have some other shows on this channel as well, if you're in into this kind of thing like we are so if anyone wants to talk about those well, we've got Eroth on sunday hopefully it was not here last week because mark was busy um has there been any confirmation if it's on this weekend no i'm not sure it might be it might not be it's one of those ones that it's on when it's on uh and then sunday 5 p.m eastern we've got trapped at home Yes, and if everything goes to plan, I should finally have video access again. So, oh. come witness the horror of Jax. I mean, but yeah, that sounds good. So does that mean we're level five now? <laughs> Funny story. So once you long rest, the um, you guys found one of the artifacts of Barovia with some smart backtracking and... Uh, 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 lucky digging, you f you did uh, hit a check mark. Yes, nice. to put nice. you guys up into level five. Oh, level Ooh. five. Ooh. Okay. Awesome. So, do you want us to go ahead and like make the changes so that we don't have to do it in game? So we'll be probably pretty RP heavy. So yeah, go ahead and do it to start for the next session. Um, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, save the long rest refreshes probably until you actually take a long rest. Sure, but, um, sure. you know, you're heading into a tavern and whatnot. So, unless you guys, you know. I'm going to murder Rictavio, but other yeah. than that, we just. Come back fine. next yeah. week for okay. the <laughs> pissing match. So jealous. <laughs> it's right there in his name. <laughs> oh, indeed. Very cool. Well, yeah, cool. Oh, fun guys. game tonight. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. we'll see you. Uh, see you Sunday, if not, obviously next week. So good night. Cheers, guys. See you later.